Well, Bitcoin is the best crypto asset. Okay, what's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right? There's no second best. Okay. But take all your money, buy Bitcoin. Then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. Then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it. Go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it, and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth. Going hot. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? It is Dollar Cost Crypto here, man. Uh, me and Michael were over here just giggling over the... Uh, this is the holy of holies in the crypto space. This is the, uh, the, the head czar of, I would say, Bitcoin, Michael Saylor. Uh, I will give him this. So this man did, he bought and, he bought and held, didn't, didn't sell, bought, got, his, got his fund at a really high price. I think his average Bitcoin price uh, at, during, during the bull market, I think it was like, what, $26,000 for Bitcoin. We did go up to like 60K, but now we're, uh, you know, kind of right back down. But hey, welcome, you guys. I've got a very special guest. I've got Michael Sartain, the co-host of Access Vegas. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to sell everything to buy Bitcoin. Hold on, man. I'm trying to mortgage my fucking house. Yeah, Hold on a second. Go faster, faster, Mike, faster. Mike, I got to buy more Bitcoin. Hold on. Let me get on this real quick. Yo. Hey, what about what about Crypto Zoo? Can I buy that? Can we do the Crypto Zoo too? Are we doing? Oh, oh we can't talk about that now. Hey, my no, bad. No, 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 Is there a cease them. and desist against me? I can't talk about Crypto Zoo. <laughs> well. Michael Sartain, ladies and gentlemen, well, introduce yourself, brother. Uh, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, Michael Sartain, otherwise known as Cat Dilf, because I rescue cats. Um, I, th I host a bunch of bikini competitions, uh, and I used to be a quantitative analyst for Continental Financial. Well, I am, I am still a uh, quantitative analyst for Continental Financial Capital. Uh, I do mostly stock options trading, a little bit of crypto. Uh, and then I also am, uh, I host um, uh, th this thing called, well, the bikini competitions, but I also do MOAMentoring.com, right. which is a male self-improvement self course that I teach. 
And then I have a podcast that seems to really piss a lot of people off called the Michael Sartain Podcast. And then I do another one with uh, Rolo Tomasi called Access Vegas, where everybody talks about their feelings and me and Rolo talk about fucking facts. And so that seems to piss a lot of people off too. It's okay to say shit about women, but man, don't you be talking about my aliens or my <laughs> flat earth and stuff, bro. bro you, you asked me before who hates me. So, so like regular cold approach PUAs hate me. All right. Black pill people fucking hate me. Okay. Uh, any of the the people who deny that that really bad thing happened in the 1940s in Germany, where all that made all those people not be alive, those people fucking hate me. The the numerologists hate me, the astrologers hate me, and the flat earthers hate me. The, and the moon landing deniers, they all hate me. So basically, all the people who are wrong just hate me. It's really funny, isn't it? Isn't it funny? I should be nicer. Maybe have, you, have, you, have you pissed off the Ku Klux Klan yet? No, the clan, uh, they haven't pissed me off yet. It's really funny, dude. I get, like, sometimes they'll tag me and stuff, and I'm like, why are you tagging me, bro? I'm brown. I'm not, I, what are you doing? I don't want, no, I don't want to be part of the fucking clan. It's like, really crazy. He's like, we were. We used to be Hells Angels. We're turning more into Mongols now. We're like. No. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's essentially what's going on. Well, hey, you guys. Um, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, this stream is all about why you need social status in crypto. Um, I've been on this fucking, like, push because I, like, a lot of crypto is dumb. It's where crypto really, and where all the best information in crypto is, it's on Twitter. Yeah. Right. It's on Twitter. You got YouTube. And that's about it. You have a little bit of stuff in, um, you used to have it on Reddit. It's kind of migrated onto Twitter, really. Mm. But um, I've been doing this huge push trying to get a lot of the crypto space onto Instagram, right? Because it was like, it was really just meeting you and, and getting and knowing Rolo and stuff. Because I, I barely, like, just this year I started my Instagram. And I was like, God damn, dude, it's like wide open over here. Holy crap. Because I mean, I, I just completely ignored it because I, I was only going for information. And then I was like, holy crap, if we're going to get the next group of people into the space, we need to be on Instagram. And on top of that, you, you, we've kind of already maxed out who we're going to interview yeah. already. So can you explain why Instagram's so important? So one of the issues I think why a lot of people migrated away from it was because a Facebook ad manager, which is Facebook ma ad manager does... Facebook and Instagram okay. will not allow you to sell a crypto course. It won't let it allow you to do anything involved with crypto. By the mm. way, it will not allow you to sell a dating course as well. They'll flag your content and then take it out, which is why you'll notice that my course is a networking course. It's a high status networking right. course. There's no dating involved. And even though I do teach some financial stuff, if you make any kind of financial promises, Facebook ad manager will not let you do it. So a lot of people moved over to Twitter. There's a couple other things that happen on Twitter also, is that there's a little bit of anon anonymity when it comes to, tr uh, to Twitter right, yeah. that doesn't exist on Instagram. On Instagram, guys, Guys and women, men and women are generally trying to build status. So dudes are trying to pick up chicks or girls are trying to show their bodies off or whatever. In order to do so, you can't really be anonymous. And so you'll notice that the comments on Instagram are not as mean. They're never as mean. On Dude, on Twitter, they come after my mom. They try to yeah. dox me. They sit there and tell me that I'm going to get like murdered. Like All kinds of crazy Jesus stuff that happens, on, that happens on Twitter. And oh, by the way, on TikTok too. But and the reason why is because on those platforms, people feel more comfortable being anonymous. Mm -hmm. Where it's the same thing on YouTube. But on Instagram, people don't feel as comfortable being anonymous. So a lot of people in crypto who do like to be anonymous, that's why they got into crypto, right? right. It's the anonymity. They don't feel comfortable being on a platform where people, you know, know more about them. They don't trust Zuckerberg to begin with. They might right. they maybe they trust Elon a little bit more than Zuckerberg. And so that's the reason why I think that it's more of a wide open space. I had given up tr Twitter for dead because I throw parties. When I throw parties, the only way to get girls to come to a party to Try me out on this. Try to get a hundred girls to show up to a party from Twitter. Let me l let me know how that works for you. Is there a hundred girls on Twitter? Yeah. Try to try to get a hundred <laughs> hot girls to show up to a party from TikTok. Try to get a hundred hot girls to show up or any other way other than Instagram. Instagram is the number one dating app in the world. And if you want to recruit girls to go to a bikini competition, a photo shoot, if you want to come to a charity event, whatever, the only way to do it is through Instagram. And so because of that, um, that's the reason why everybody's using Instagram right now for, for that kind of stuff. And so crypto isn't really heavy on there. It doesn't do as well. Uh, unfortunately, what you will see though is a lot of guys will go on Instagram and then they'll buy a huge following and that's always a bad idea mm. because once you start taking steroids you got to keep taking steroids to say that big you know what I'm saying once yeah. you it's, it's really what, hard does it go away or something no it's 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 that what will happen is after a while you've got 8 million followers and you have to keep buying engagement in order to show the 22,000 likes because as soon as you stop paying for engagement then your engagement goes down to like 200 likes so that's one of the issues that happens. Right. And then you're, then it, like, oh, then obviously you're a, fake. A lot of guys did that. And because that's what they thought the best idea was to do. And it's, it's really come back to hurt them later on uh, as far as that's concerned. And one of the ways you can tell, by the way, if anybody wants to know, go on uh, Social Blade. You can check and see if, if and when people bought followers. That's the first thing. And secondly, you can go, what I like to do is I like to check a person's YouTube engagement and then compare it to their TikTok engagement, and compare it to their Twitter engagement, and compare it to their Instagram engagement. I look at those four metrics. Yeah. And another way you, it's really great, like when I look for guests, 
is I'll go and I'll look at Google search terms, mm. right? If a guy claims to be famous and he's got 10 million followers on Instagram, the first thing I'm going to do is look up Google search terms to see, okay, does anyone search this guy? If no one searches this guy, he's got 10 million followers, he bought this shit. Yeah. And then you're going to see lots of triple fire emojis, heart emojis in the comments and that that's what happens. I don't mind if a guy pays for a following, just don't pay for a following and then not tell me so that I'm, I'm sitting there trying to have you on my show when right. you haven't built a following. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Brad, by the way, Brad Lee is one of the guys who were complaining to me about this. He kept having these, he's, it was always like the fifth best real estate agent from Des Moines, Iowa. And he was like, who the fuck are these people coming on my show? They're not really helping my engagement whatsoever. Right. And a lot of time we'll have a guy who'll come on and he'll, he'll, he'll try to come on and he'll have fake engagement. And I'm not mad at you for having fake engagement. My point is I'm not going to help you and you're not going to help me. We're just going to have a shitty fucking podcast because I don't pay for engagement. It's going to get 200, 200 views. What was the point for either one of us? Right. And his point is basically he, you know, he's like, all right, I'm just, I'm just gripping off of you. Cool, I can maybe get some real engagement off of your, your show. Basically. Yeah, I mean, the trick is to don't do that. Like, yeah. I really think, do you really like? I don't care. If somebody has cool concepts. I don't care how many followers they have. I was right. some of the best, some of the best uh, Instagram accounts I've ever seen don't have ten thousand followers. Like, they're yeah. they're really great because it's really hard to grow organically on on Instagram. So let's all just play the same game. No, that's what I respect about you because I've seen you do a bunch of shows of just guys. I'm like, I mean, I I've, I found out of quite a lot of shows just from. I mean, I shout out to all the bodybuilding content you've done on your. Yeah. That, that was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know what I've seen? There's a lot of interesting people that I've met through your show that I'm like, holy crap! I wouldn't have never known about these yeah. people at all. But people don't play. This is the shit that really fucks with me is coming in because I was not on social media at all. I just had yeah. a landscape business. You know, I just kept to myself, investments myself, and that's it. But since I've had to make a business and I've had to be on camera, I'm like, all right, let me learn. About this, and I kind of feel like this small town dude coming to the big city, and I'm like, everyone's a piece of fucking shit. Holy shit, dude! Like, it's it's like I literally got told to my face so, so many times, like, hey, hey man, I'll have you on, but like, I typically don't have people. On. You know, you're a cool dude because I met you in person. It was kind of like weird. It's like you kind of meet people and you have to play like day game on them. So, right? so here's the trick. What I do is I have a panel live stream I do every other Monday. Yeah. And if a guy's not that big, I'm still gonna have him. First of all, number one, I say no to. There's no one I say no to. I will go on anyone's show. Anyone who's watching this, call me out on this. I will go on ever. If there's 500 people right now who want me to go on their show, I will do at least 30 minutes for all of you. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, if a guy is persistent, I put him on my Monday live streams. So we're on Zoom and then he can kind of pitch what he has to say if it's right. really interesting. I'm not interested in the 15th guy to try to tell me that, that clearly he made his money in solar and he's trying to buy his engagement. I'm not... I'm not, I, I don't hate you, bro, but I'm not interested in what you have to say. You think you're the next Andrew Tate, but you're not. You're just not that interesting, but you're sure you are because in the shower, your girlfriend that you pay for her entire life told you you were fucking interesting. And so now we're going to go ahead and start your own. No, dude, I'm just like, it's no offense, but there's a bunch of guys out here that are doing this right now. And I'm like, dude, I think about how fucking hard I work. This is my fourth show today. Yeah. How hard I work to build any kind of following. Dude, you want to know something else? I pay a guy to remove 3,000 followers from my Instagram every month. You were telling me about from that. From Nepal. I pay a guy, he removes 3,000. You're like, why the fuck would you do that? Any Cyrillic alphabet, any Portuguese, any Hindi, um, anyone from Jakarta, anyone from India, I have them remove Jakarta. those accounts. <laughs> I have them remove the accounts. And the reason why is because what will happen is, like, I, I think... Uh, so because of some people I've, I've, I've interviewed, some of their followers glom onto my account. You right. will get, by the way, if you have 10 million followers, some of them are going to be fake. There's no way There's to no stop that. It. Yeah. There's no way to stop it. But I, I'm at 110,000. So I can still remove enough to where I can make my engagement realer, but I'm gaining, I'm gaining some and I'm losing some. And what I would like is for a 100%, I would rather have 40,000 followers who all engage than 110,000 and only have 40,000 engaged because it hurts your engagement overall because Instagram is going to show your content to 2% of your followers. Well, if 2% of your followers includes people who live in Rio de Janeiro and Jakarta and they no, they don't even speak English, they're not going to engage with your shit right. and you're just losing impressions. I would rather have my impressions goes to people who are zealots of my content. I would rather, like if I had right now, if I had an account that had 10 million followers and I knew most of them were fake, I would just delete the account. I would start over from zero and just do a bunch of collabs to boost my account up. Or another thing you could do is go on Facebook Ad Manager and just run ads to go back to your account, which is what, you know, Ty Lopez did something like that. And that's another way to get legitimate followers to your account. There's better ways to do it than to pay some guy who lives out. Again, I, I'm going to, I keep saying Jakarta because Jakarta is the, Jakarta and Tehran, Iran are the number one places for click farms on this planet. Mm. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, find the hottest girl, you know, 
I say, hey, can I look at your engagement? Go to her engagement, go to her dashboard, and it's going to show where her audience is. And I promise you, it's going to say United States, and then it's going to say Tehran and India. I promise you it will. It's going to say Tehran, or it's going to say Indonesia. That's always what it says. So these chicks, are, even the chicks are buying engagement. Yo, a lot of chicks are buying engagement. You'll see that now because what'll, <laughs> what they'll do is, is that because they know they're losing engagement, they'll post a photo, and then they'll turn it off where you can't see how many likes they get. Mm. They'll do that, that. But you can't do it on reels, but you can do it on, um, on photos. Yeah. And it's just been, it's been fantastic. Like, it's been an awesome thing watching because I still get so much engagement i was showing this to um dan fleshman the other day okay and me and dan were talking and i was getting uh i get about seventy thousand likes a month on my on my ig and then i got thirty three thousand shares right. and he was like that's impossible like how do you get so many shares come because i po i write i have polarizing content yeah. where i don't get a ton of likes a lot of people don't like me but they'll still share my shit right and so that's and then the, the sharing then leads people back to my account and then they go to the link in bio which leads them down my funnel for moa mentoring.com right. and that's how we end up making we had our first month last week my, my partners don't want me to say how much money we make because <laughs> we're making so much money they don't want me to say how much money we're making but the way we do that is through following other people on how they build their um, engagement, except I focus a little bit more on organic. Like I do, I try to do almost exactly what Alex Ramosi talks about in $100 million right. offer and $100 million leads. I'm almost done with $100 million leads. I bought it yesterday. Uh, but like, like that's what I try to do in order to, to build the business. And I want to do it organically. And I don't give a fuck if someone's like, well, I have 10 million followers and you only have 100,000. You're a loser. And I'm like, dude, it doesn't matter. The, the interesting people are, you're either interesting or you have a legitimate following. One of those right. two things, I'm going to have you on my show. If you're neither one of those things, like I would have a physicist on in two seconds. Right. I don't care if he has no Instagram. If he's a legit physicist and we can have discussions about that, those, those three guys who went in front of Congress and made up all that bullshit about aliens, I would love to have a conversation about that. That would be really interesting to me. So that, that's essentially, that's what I do. So I don't have a problem with people buying fake, you know, buying engagement. Um, what's his face? Clever investor. You know who he is? Yes. He's straight up went on cat went on on uh he was at uh, elevator nights and straight up said i bought my following yep. all of it was fake that. and i made a fucking ton of money from it and go for it bro i have no problem with that because he admits it i don't have any issue with that but like dudes are like trying to big dick each other and like a does, that, does that only work in bull markets because it, look if, if it like what i've noticed in financial time and like in terms of the, the space over here and everything like that in terms of youtube twitter and everything like that it seems like that only works when prices are doing really well and yes. then we're, we're as a dumb like a, when you come in as a dumb investor you're like Damn, that guy's got a lot of follows. He probably knows what he's talking about. There's alpha there. Yeah, isn't it crazy? Right? It's so, so one of the things is, um, and I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. In 2017, they told me it was going to be a recession. 2018, they told me it would be a recession. 2019, they told me it would be a recession. 2020, there was for a little bit, but that was because of coronavirus. And, and like people were like, oh, I predicted that. And I'm like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to show you. Show me the screenshot of the tweet, buddy. And then 2021, there was supposed to be a recession. We hit all-time highs. Then 2022, there's supposed to be a recession. There's always supposed to be a recession. Whenever I hear YouTubers start telling me about a recession coming, I'm like, boy, I'm buying everything I could get my fucking hands on. <laughs> I don't listen to any of you. You guys don't know what market indicators, these YouTubers, like they don't know what market indicators are. And they just say all this shit. Dude, you want to know what's really funny? When, when inflation got up to 10%, yep. people were just waggling their dicks so fucking happy. Fuck Biden, 10% inflation. Yep. We told you. You know inflation's at like 2.8%. Percent now, yeah. no one's saying shit. Again, I'm not saying Joe Biden is a terrible president. I agree, yeah. but when Joe Biden was elected, it wasn't a one-to-one -one indicator of a re fucking recession. That's not how it works. No one knows shit. You don't know what's going to happen. That's how free market economies work. And as soon as I heard everyone saying there was a recession, I was like, no, I'm not listening to you anymore. So, uh, so, yeah. so here's the thing. You remember the Jonah Hill situation yes. where Jonah Hill, he, he has those text messages between him and the girl. And then you start seeing all these therapists on TikTok and they're like, yeah, this was um, controlling behavior. Um, right. He was he was not setting boundaries. And these 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 they're getting 750,000 likes on this shit. And I'm like looking at this like if I was a therapist and I saw 750,000 likes on this thing that is clearly incorrect, I might believe that it's real. And that's terrible. And that's what we're seeing here. You guys, you know, I love Robert Kiyosaki. But Robert Kiyosaki every year is telling me recession's coming, recession. Right. Coming, right. Recession's coming. Recession's coming. Recession's coming. Inflation, inflation, inflation. And like the thing is, like there will be a recession, but it won't be because you guys guessed it. It's going to happen when it happens for a reason that you don't even know. And it'll happen three presidents from now. And when it does, you'll be like, so told you, recession. No, boy, you don't know. No one knows. When you fully grasp the fact that no one knows shit, that is when you can make money. Shout out to selling stock options. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, man. There we go, man. Now, I will say we probably were in a recession in 22, but 
it, but in traditional sense, but they've changed the White House kind of changed the whole perception. You know, yeah. Supposed- but when I, when I think of a recession, I'm, it should be really hard for me to get a job, and I should see fifteen percent unemployment. And I'm not saying either one of those things. Right. Unemployment but, is re- ridiculously low so, right now, dude. Right. No, no, no. I know that. True, but 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 like we have to know that they stop counting. So there's people who like who like if they only count a certain amount of people in terms of the jobs report, in terms of like we're looking actively looking for a job. If you've been actively looking for a job for over a year plus. They stop counting. You know, I know, and they. And I know you know that. And they've done. And they've done that before. But when I when I'm talking about a recession, I'm like a heavy shit. I'm talking about 1975. Uh, gas goes from 25 cents to a dollar. That's what I want to see. Yeah. And I'm looking there, and I saw gas like in Texas for like three dollars and ninety cents. That's not that bad, bro. Like the the this is not that bad. We have positive GDP growth. Believe me. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I'm, I'm, DeSantis is probably who I'm voting for. What I'm saying is we need to stop believing. We'll go back to this. And I know this is yeah. not what you want to talk about. But it's like when somebody does something and he's part of our political party, we agree with everything he says Blanket. and disagree yeah. with everything. Like have an open mind about Ukraine, Russia. Too many people who hate Biden are like pro-Russia and anti-Ukraine. Slow down. This has nothing to do with you. S- stop sticking your, <laughs> your dick in this. And it becomes a serious problem. So one of the things that happened was Keystone Pipeline gets shut down, yeah. and then all of a sudden Biden gets elected, and it's like 100% there's a recession. And I and I saw it as a buying opportunity. As yep. soon as I saw people saying that, I was like, I am going to buy every single thing I can. I don't know if you guys noticed, market was at uh, 3,800, 3,500. Yep. The, the all-time high is... 3,800, we're 300 points or 400 points away from we're all-time, basically highs. all-time highs. Yeah, yeah, we're at all-time highs. So I looked at it as an opportunity. Dude, I was levering up. I was like, dude, I'm buying everything. And like, again, another guy I love. I love Chris Kiyosaki and I love Alex Hermosi. I watched this video of Alex Hermosi saying, in the upcoming recession, I'm like, I'm buying everything. As soon as I heard Alex Hermosi <laughs> saying, upcoming recession, I'm like, I'm buying every single thing I can get my hand on. Because it's not, no, no offense to Alex Hermosi, this is one of the greatest marketers of our generation. Alex yeah. Hermosi is incredible. But as soon as I heard him trying to explain to me, me who've been working in finance for 10 years, Years about what a recession is coming. I'm like, oh, dude, it is time to buy, bro. Yep. It is time to buy. Like, no, hold on. When Jim Simons comes at me and tells me there's a recession, I'm gonna listen. Okay. Jim Simons doesn't lose. No, he, yep. Okay. When Jim Simons, do, when Ray Dalio, Magellan Fund, right? Huh? Magellan Fund. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, 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 the Medallion Fund. Medallion yeah. Fund. Yeah. 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 When he does that, bro, I'm, I'm all about. It. I'm gonna listen to that. That dude doesn't lose. But if if I hear like some guy who goes on CNBC saying it, I'm like, if everyone said, this is one I learned from Tom Sosnoff, who's my, a buddy of mine, who's a billionaire. Tom Sosnoff has sold three different brokerages. He says when everybody says one thing, you go in the fucking opposite direction, and that's what I do. Everyone in pickup said men and women can't be friends, so I went in the opposite direction and made a ton of money from that. And I go people, in the opposite and people direction. are mad about you about that too because that. Sure. that this is the one thing, like even though even even our, some of our friends in the red pill, well, that was the one thing they're like, uh, uh, like every I notice every time you say that to them, like they get a little like, like so it, mad, it, they, and they, then they look at my IG and they get madder because they're like, dude, how the fuck is he around so many hot women? They get so, dude, anybody who's like men and women can't be friends, just take a second, go to my Instagram right now, and then look at the videos, and then just keep not the not the videos of me talking yeah. on the microphone, just the bikini competitions and all the other stuff, and just keep clinching your butthole as hard as you can, telling me men and women can't be friends. <laughs> keep telling me. All right, so okay, I gotta ask about this then. So. Is it is it specific, is it because you're like a one percent male or is it because or like because like I've, I mean to me like most guys what you know it, it's sort of this they have a they have like a lacking of pussy in their life yes that's and, the problem and any any girl that would be their friend they're gonna try to fuck yes. right if you if you got out of prison this week you yeah. can't be friends with women hundred percent right but the thing is with like say Rollo like Rollo came here uh, so I, I'll give you this example Correct. if you guys know about Fresh and Fit yes. you know Icy. Right. Yes, yes, okay. Basically. They're all friends with Icy. Yeah, if you cool. don't think that if some dude put his hands on Icy, that Mo or fucking Aaron Poxon wouldn't beat the shit out that motherfucker, you're dumb. Shut up, that's Mo, her, baby. That's their friend. I'm telling you right now. If 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 um if if Icy had a wedding, they'd all go to the wedding because she's their friend. Right. What they're saying, what they're saying correctly, by the way, is that most guys, when they're around girls like that, they're only trying to fuck, and because of that, they can't be friends, and that's the truth. For me, I have this weird thing, like this weird preference, where I haven't really been, other than like threesomes, I haven't been with a girl that doesn't have a boob job in like 10 years, right. other than occasionally we'll bring girls home with like have a threesome. And so because of that, anytime I meet a girl with a boob, with, that doesn't have a boob job, I immediately can friend zone her, because I'm not really that attracted. You know what I'm saying? So it's because so, you've always pulled girls with boob jobs. It's fuck. It's like no, but, but, no. But it's like there's some disqualification. Like Kindly Myers, we, her and I are really good friends because she's married. She's been with the same guy since I met her. Right. And like the idea of me screwing up her life by doing something like this is so anathema. And then the other thing with Kindly is that she's constantly introducing me to other women. She's a huge playmate, and she introduces me to other women. Why would I screw that up by just like trying to hook up with her? I don't. Right. And the other thing is like whenever I meet a hot girl, and I was talking before I had a girlfriend. Not now. I have a girlfriend now. But before I had a girl, <laughs> before I had a girlfriend, I would immediately take them. To 
to Kindly, and Kindly, bro, she would just tie the knot, seal the fucking deal. Ty, Kindly Myers, as a wing woman, is cheating, bro. It yeah. is fucking Trembolone mixed with Halo Tessin. It is cheating. Having a girl that hot go out with you is cheating. And so I would take her out and be like, well, of course I'm going to be friends with her. And then here's the thing. I have this networking uh, coaching program and I have a podcast. Right. So I believe these beautiful women on and they're helping my business. So they're helping my business. They're introducing me to women to hook up uh, to, to me. And then about 85% of the women I sleep with end up with their girls I'm friends with. I'm just yeah. friends with them. And so this whole thing happens and, and it only works because I have abundance. So I teach my clients to have the same kind of abundance. You're right. 98% of men, it's not going to work. If you don't do it my way, you can't be friends with women. You're right. right. But this idea, like I always ask Myron or I ask um, Rolo, I was like, you'd beat the shit out of somebody for Tory Grow, wouldn't you? Of course he would. Tory Grow is his friend. Fucking uh, Icy is his friend. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So this idea that like you can't just be friends. There's a lot of girls that you are not attracted to that you can be friends with. What I would recommend guys do is find a group of girls that for whatever reason you're just like not that attracted to and then just make a group of them your friend and you're going to see, oh, okay, this will work. You know what I'm saying? So like, basically what you're saying is we need to make friend zone great again. No, no. You need to friend zone. No, what I'm saying <laughs> no, no, is that's you saying. need to. Yes. That, yeah. I'm saying it like you yeah. need to friend zone girls. You don't let friend girls friends on you. Exactly. You need you to friend zone girls. Them. And then here's what there's the craziest part that happened. Let's say you friends on 10 girls, you invite them out to a club. Now 10 girls are out at this club trying to figure out which one of the girls you're fucking, and they're all looking at each other, and there's this weird sexual energy that happens mm. where they're all like trying to figure out who this guy is, and, and they start competing for your attention. And you do nothing, and this girl who's your friend asks you to go home with them. It's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. I can't tell you, like oh, I said this before. Before I have a, I'm in a relationship now. Before 85% of the girls I would go, I would sleep with were girls that I was just friends with who would let me know that they were attracted to me mm. because I kept putting I kept being in the situations where it was me and seven girls. I like to keep the ratio I like to use is seven to one. Seven girls for every guy. At the parties we go, the, I got that from Bulzarian. Right. Uh, seven girls to every guy. And you learn to set that up. That's what my program teaches you is how to create a situation like that where seven girls to every guy. When you do that, there's no way you're going to fuck all of them. You're going to be friends with some of them. If you if you knew a girl, if I tell you a girl right now, she's exactly your type, right. that your choice is either I try to fuck this girl or this girl brings 20 girls to my house. Which are you going to choose? Well, as a man, I'd say 20. Yeah, yeah. But she and she can. And that's the point. You just always choose girls like that, and it's just easy. But you just have to use a little bit of a, a little bit of rationality in order to figure that out. So this really just seems as like because men can't pull that many, and then this is the reason they have this kind of starvation mentality. Yes, if you friend zone them though, you can. You can be a low status dude and friend zone girls. You can also be very interesting. Like for instance, for me. I want to be the guy that all my friends meet their girlfriends through. I want to be the guy that all my female friends meet their boyfriends through. Mm. I want to be the guy that all of my a podcast co-host yeah. get their sponsors through. I want to be the guy that all my friends get their jobs through. I want to be all the guy that all my guy friends get their employees through and all like if you wanted to meet your mentor, I want to I want to be the guy to introduce, introduce you, you to your mentor. I want to be so I was the guy who helped you know Wes Watson on uh Sosnick the yep. other day and Wes Watson on uh, Fresh and Fit and then Fresh and Fit with Bulzarian. I set those up. That's I set those up. Why? Because I'm connecting people. I want to be the connector for all these different people. When you're the connector, you can be a short brown four foot eleven guy who's not handsome. But if you're the ultimate connector in your group, you're you're just gonna get higher and higher status. Right. And then you end up going to these parties where it's seven girls to every guy, and you just have better chances with women. That's just the way it works. Now, can we let, let's 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 go down to like the square root of everything, right? Why is status so important? Like in terms of like like not just for I mean, let's talk about it in the money sense, but like girl sense, but like because you have to understand, there's a lot of guys that they, like, they're just like, all right, this shit's bad. I want to make some money now, and then they're like they start getting into these little micro communities in crypto, and they're and they start. And it's kind of it's funny because like, I'm coming from the red pill. I see what people are trying to do. Like they're they're making up all this bullshit just to get a bunch of clicks so they can get more popular in yeah. the little community. So why is status so important? Even when there's no chicks there, why do people care about status? It's this weird thing. So g just. Bear with me for a second. Sure, sure. Assume that you are the product of three million years of natural selection and assume that at your core, we're all just extremely shallow, hairless murder apes. I got a hint for you. What I said is actually the truth. <laughs> um, so just assume that is the case. I know okay. for some of you that's an offensive idea, but just assume I'm telling the truth. What you're going to find is that in life, people would rather see the boob than read the book. They would rather hear the explosion than actually like find out the context of whatever it is that they're mm -hmm. doing. People are shallow and have short attention spans, okay? okay? 
when you understand this concept, what, what'll happen is you, you come to understand that like people want, by the way, it's not actually having status, it's showing status. It's really funny. Wait, 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 wait. It's not actually not, having- Not having status versus showing status. No, no, so, so having status is important, but if you have a lot of status and then we go up to marquee or whatever, or yeah. we go to like some club, unless you're buying a table on the dance floor, you have to show the status. Do you understand? Like yeah. if two guys buy dance floor tables at, at marquee, they, the girl can't tell which one's higher status, right? right? But if this guy right here is on on social media and he shows, ready, here's the two things, competency, relevancy. If you can show those two things, competency, relevancy. I have a buddy of mine, uh, Black Tape Project, yeah. uh, a king of tape, Joel Alvarez, who was here. He it, dates nothing but gorgeous women. He's like five foot eight, five foot nine, the hottest woman you've ever seen. He's not rich because he's competent with the Black Tape Project. Musical artists, professional athletes, whatever. There's this middle class of fame that you can achieve, like lower middle class of fame. Like I'm lower middle class famous. I'm not famous. I'm low. I'm yeah. famous enough to where I can get into any club and like every. It, it, is this what they talk about? Like a listers, B listers, C listers. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, that, for that sure. Sort of stuff. But like, yeah. but, but there's like an F list now, and there was no F list <laughs> in 1985. You were Tom Cruise, or you were a fucking school teacher in 1985. That that right. was it, right? Yeah, right? Like you were Hulk Hogan, or you were no one back in 1985. Now there's this like lower middle class of fame where you're just like a content creator, and you've got like a hundred thousand subs, and you have some girls come on your show. And those girls want to come on the show because they're trying to get OF followers. And then next thing you know, there's like 10 girls on your show every week. And then two of them are trying to fuck you. And then like, there's this like middle class of fame that exists. Like right now, I only have 60,000 subs on YouTube, but every GM in Las Vegas watches my show. So there's no club in Vegas. I can't just walk into, you see what I'm saying? It's yeah, like yeah. this lower middle class of fame. And does it localize or is it, or, or is it? No, because it, of social media, it doesn't. So I, when I go to Miami, I, I'll hit Dave Grutman or whatever. And I yeah. can walk into live, walk into Mr. Jones, whatever. And that's the reason why. And I'm just using nightclubs as an example, because it's a very easy explanation of access, but like for whatever convention, like because I have a podcast, even though it wasn't super popular, I had Dan Fleischman put me on, on L Elevator nights, and I had Ty Lopez include. He has included me in his new program that he's got coming up. Right? You right. understand what I'm saying? Or Bilzerian would like I would bring a, a list of girls to one of Bilzerian's ignite parties. How does this happen? It happens because I'm living in this like lower middle class of status, which guys can uh, can achieve. And so it's really important to do that. So how do you do that? One more time. It's relevancy and competency. Right. You show access to scarce resources, and you show higher status. You can do that on social media, and not even have ten thousand followers. It's possible to do that. And when you don't do that, like you're gonna miss out on so many opportunities you have no many you have, like i'm gonna tell you this to guys right now who are watching this yeah. especially you guys who are on twitter not on instagram if you meet an attractive woman who's under the age of 45 and she when she meets you the first thing she's gonna do as soon as she goes to the bathroom or goes home is check your instagram if you didn't know that you know it now say it again say it again if you meet an attractive woman under the age of 45 and she meets you and she leaves to go to the bathroom or she leaves to go home. The first thing she's going to do is check your Instagram. If you didn't know it, now you know. So your Instagram showing relevancy and or competency is the thing that's going to make her want to stay involved with you. Right. Other than a 10 digit text message from her. Hey, it's Steve. I met you at the club. She's like, who the fuck is this guy? I don't right. even know who the fuck he is. Whereas with me, we'll meet. I'll take a video with you, funny video, have like a filter one or whatever, and I'll tag her in the video. I'll either post it or I'll send it directly to you. Like for instance, I have a lot of clients. It's funny, like maybe they're divorced and they're going through like a divorce proceeding, so yeah. they can't post anything on their social media. With those guys, I'll be like, just direct DM the girl directly with the video. And the girl's like, oh, this is that dude I had a fucking blast with last night. Yeah, what are you doing? Let's go fucking hang out. Stuff like that. It's very easy to understand these concepts. You have to use social media. It makes so much sense. The problem is like when guys don't believe in it, all you have to do is look at the guys who do believe in it and how much success they're having. You're like, holy fuck, this really works. Right. It's, re it's really crazy. And the other thing that really blows people's mind, and watch, you're going to get a bunch of comments in the chat that'll say i'm bullshitting on this i use zero money to get these girls zero Haram, money. i don't believe bro zero I don't, money i don't believe bro i don't pay a penny i will give anyone twenty thousand dollars no questions asked if you can find one single girl i've ever paid to come to any of my events or to take a photo with me dudes get so angry because they're like no there's no way he has to pay these girls i pay no one to hang out with me and why is that it's because i know how to create a good offer remember 100 million dollar offer by yep. alex hermosi yep. alex hermosi's 100 million dollar offer book is a pickup book it's a dating book but you don't realize it's a dating book mm. having the best having an offer so good that a girl feels fucking stupid for not hanging out with you how incredible is that right. that's that's what alex hermosi is describing so why don't you just do that it's easy how do i do that uh thursday it's uh babes in toyland charity 
It's an animal rescue charity. You know what girls say no to an animal rescue charity? Me neither. I haven't met a single one. They all show up. <laughs> it's 300 girls coming to an animal rescue charity to help us raise money for dog, homeless dogs and cats. There's going to be so many fucking hot women there. It's ridiculous. We won't even be able to fit them all in there. That's essentially what I'm creating. That's the offer. No girl's going to say no to that. And that's what you do. You just do that over and over again. It required me zero dollars. Zero dollars to do that. So, okay. So that's all. So I guess I've gotten these comments before in the past and stuff when I save this shit. So... And I've seen this on some of your streams as well. And is like, okay, so what? What do you? How can a guy that's let's just say someone's in a relationship? Hey, I don't want to be smashing these chicks, but I do want to gain some of this. Sure. Th th what can a married guy do, or what can a guy who's like not looking for like girls? Would you leverage some of this stuff to actually help him in this business? Yeah. So a lot of my clients. So well, if you go to my a free school server, a yeah. lot of my clients don't. Which put, is linked below, you guys. Yeah. Don't put any girls. They put zero women on their social media. Okay. Uh, and the reason why they'll do that is because they're an accountant or they're a lawyer or something like that. Maybe a top, top secret government clearance. A lot of military guys in my program. And so for those, those guys, what we would do is it's the same concepts. We just don't use as many women. The reason why I use the example of influencers is because if you can bench press 300 pounds, you can bench press 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Having parties with influencers is harder. Like when we source, remember when we do the, like the, uh, the Avengers thing with fresh yeah, and yeah, fit, yeah. we all showed up on time. Right. Of course we did. Cause we're fucking men. We're, we're accountable. Yeah. We text each other. We all text back. We're men. When I have 10 girls here with big fake boobs, they're Bro. late. It is like hurting cats trying to get these women to show up. You, and you guys have to believe this shit. Cause I've been here backstage a ton of times. Like Michael invites like fucking 40 bitches and like five show up. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like it's we insane. always no, it's crazy. Cause last week you guys saw those 14 girls. Yeah, on I there was like, what the hell? Because every girl showed up it was because the show, because the show continues to increase in status, the flake rate becomes lower and lower, which by the way, every one of you who watches this, you'll notice that as your status increases, the flake rate on women who you ask out will decrease ra drastically. Right. It's going to go lower. You, the question you got to ask yourself is, would she have flaked on Drake? That's why I got that from Brandon Carter. It's like, if this was Drake, would Shut she have flaked Brandon on Carter. me? Yeah, of course she, she wouldn't have. So that's that's essentially what happens. So as your status increases, you're going to start noticing you get less and fewer and fewer flakes. But again, if I can do this by t getting 10 girls to show up here, when we start doing this with real estate agents or mortgage brokers it's a joke yeah, it's, it's a joke they're, they're because they're men you shake their hand if i shake your hand i'll be there at two o'clock on sunday the motherfucker will be there because he's a man he knows he's not he doesn't have value from his big fake tits he's got value from keeping his word so if you can do this with influencers it's very easy to do with this with men this is the reason why i always start with the, the female influencers first right. But anyway, so the, the steps are, if you go to the free school server, there's a free course where we teach you how to do this. Step one is fix your social media. Step two is to build a list. So in your case, let's say you don't want to do it with women. What I would do is have 200 people... Um, Russell Brunson in his book, uh, Traffic Secrets, he yeah. talks about a hot 100. These are the hot 100 people you want on your podcast or you want to collab with or you want to like get on their podcast. You would have this, hot, like I say 200, you would have 200 people that you want to network with. Like for instance, I want to network with the mayor, Mayor Goodman. I would love to meet Mayor Goodman. I would love to meet David Goggins. I would love to meet, yeah. uh, I would like to, to get Alex Ramosi. Like there's some people that I want to get on my show. So I would put those people on my list. Step three is to find six events to uh, invite people to. And you want open threads with these people. You want as many open threads as possible. There's a trick. I don't know if you guys know. There's a new Instagram update where you can't message people. And, like they, You can't message people twice unless they accept your uh, your message invite. Right. We have a workaround. If you guys join MOA Mentor or like join the school server, we the first thing we do is teach you there's a workaround. We've completely defeated the new uh, IG update. Nice. I don't even want, I don't want to say it out, out loud what we do because people will see this and then they're going to change it on IG. Right. And then... And then step number four, and I'm going to say this, even if you're married, you should be showing up to events with six beautiful women. I don't care if you're married. I don't care who you are. If you showed up to an event with six beautiful women, let's say your wife and like, yeah, you know, yeah. a couple of the women, some friends. Yeah, yeah. you are going to see every, well, I used to only go to Ty Lopez's events with beautiful women. I used to go to Fleischmann's events with beautiful women. When you do that on a regular basis, let's say it's not six, let's say it's like four. You're going to notice everyone's going to stop. Everyone's going to give you their card. Everyone's going to remember you. Everyone's going to want to work with you and you will get invited to everything. There's a great book. It's by Professor Ashley Mears. She is a professor of sociology at Boston University. The book is called um, Very Important People. Okay. In the book, she talks about, she went undercover. She's a PhD in sociology. She goes undercover as basically a bottle rat. Yes, I've heard of this book. Yeah. Yes, she, yes, she, yes. She's a bottle rat for like two years. And what she, because she used to be a runway model who got her PhD. So she goes all out as a bottle rat. She's like 30 years old, but she's still hotter than most of the 20 year olds, right? So she gets invited <laughs> to everything. And she explained in the, you know, in the Hamptons, you know, in the summer in the Hamptons, everybody goes and parties. Those are incredible parties, bro. You think you could make some connections at all those Hamptons? Think if you had access to every Hamptons party. How would that be? Incredible. 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 What is the key to get into every party in the Hamptons? Women. Having fucking women with you. I'm sorry. Debate over. Debate over. 
You should be able to do this. If you are a guy who's competent enough to have beautiful women with you, fucking them or not, you're going to be able to be a better networker, period. Because, because there's, uh, is it because there's scarce resources? It, it, it's for, because for of, there's this, again, go back to hairless murder rate. Okay. Dudes are going to see that you're, <laughs> dudes are going to see that you're with women and just be like, well, that guy's probably not a weirdo. He's probably not a psychopath. He's got a bunch of women with him. For whatever reason, everything you say is just more interesting. Right. Got, like, again, and the other thing is this. It's my job to protect my female friends, but not my job to save them. Often, my guy friend, like I'll bring that. I'll, what a quote, bro! I'll, That's I'll, a quote. I walk <laughs> in with six girls and I walk out with five because one of them met a dude that she liked. If guys are, if I'm the reason why most of my guy friends are meeting hot women, good. Good. That's what I fucking want, dude. That's what I want. But again, like it, it, that's the thing you want to do. I want my friends to get their jobs through me. I want my friends to meet their girlfriends through me. I want to be the ultimate connector, like it talks about in um in that book, um, uh, the Tipping Point by yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. Too. Like that, that's what I want. So I have a huge book list that I recommend to all my clients. I teach them how to use how to do this high status networking. You can do it for women or not for women. It's not a dating course, but my clients end up dating like obviously really beautiful women because of pre-selection, and so that's that's essentially what happens. Now for okay, so you're obviously a really well read guy. You you are, so how do you digest books personally? Is it is it audio? Is you read them? Like what do you do? Um, so Alex Armosi recommends audio and reading at the same time. That's an hey, interesting whoa. thing to do. Yeah, there's okay. a whisper. A, a feature you can use on Kindle that will do that. I recommend anytime you are in the car, anytime you are eating food, or anytime you are in the gym, you should be listening at least 1.7 speed. Try to push it up to 2.0. And you should be doing, like, I've gotten to the point Good now. Good luck with this one, you guys. Yeah, I've, I've gotten <laughs> to the point where I'm, uh, no, I, I, tr trust me, 1.0 sounds like people are drunk. I can't mm. listen to 1.0 anymore. Like, at 1.3, I'm, like, still annoyed. At 1.7, everyone sounds normal to me. At 2.0, it starts to sound like good, but I can still understand. Yeah, yeah. Some people at 2.2, I actually hear them better. And once you get to 2.7, a lot of people, it's going to be too fast. I can do 3.0 with certain narrators who are like really a slow. Slow, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the thing. When you do that, and then what I do is every chapter of a book, I write down one keynote on my phone. So do a set. Heard a thing, write down a uh, hyphen, and then I write down the, the thing, the note, and then I go down to the next chapter. So if you look at my my notes on like Bulzarian's book, The Setup, there's 95, there's 94 chapters, and there's 94 notes in there. That's generally what I do to kind of help me remember. Okay. And the other thing I do that really helps me is after I read a chapter in the book, I go explain it to someone else. Like I can talk to you right now about all the stuff I learned in $100 million leads yeah. that I just read. And those things are so incredible to help you. Like the fact that Alex Hermosi did $6 million in revenue the first year, $25 million the second year, ended up selling the business for $100 million. He's 32 years old, worth $100 million. million. Like these are numbers you, like I remember these. Why? Because I just read the book last night and I remember these things and I teach them to other people. I'm sitting there explaining to my girlfriend. I was like, this is what we got to do. We got to do a low ticket offer. And she's looking, she's like a world champion bikini model. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like what are you talking about? Um, and so, so like that's essentially what goes on. So I listen to audiobooks because you can do other things while you're listening, yep. and then I try to teach it to other people and take notes. That's general, generally the way I do it. And this is so crazy because this is exactly what I teach my guys when it comes to you should always be listening to some some informational YouTube video, just something that has to do with the crypto space. Now, have you ever gotten like a burnout? Because like I've used this as like a thing. So um, I can I've I've taught myself eventually where I, I could listen to for eight hours on one yes. subject. Isn't it crazy? For, for like nothing. But I understand for some people, even some, there's some days where even I'm just like, God damn it, will you shut the fuck up sometimes? Like yeah. on some of these guys, like some of these guys, because like what, you become so knowledgeable in a certain field that you start listening to, it just repeats itself yeah. over and over and so, over. So mix in some Clancy, mix in some Lee Child, mix in some George R. Martin. Bro, mix, my G, bro, you're literally yeah, saying yeah. what I'm saying. Mix in some shit. James S.A. Corey. God damn, Mix son. in, I, I like to mix in fa uh, fiction. For those of you who are super analytical, mix in some Andy Weir. I recommend The Martian, uh, Artemis, and, um, and Hail Mary. Like those books are phenomenal Dune, especially on audio Dune. Yeah, Dune is Dune. another great one Dune Bro, is perfectly fine every, and what I love about it most because most audio books it's just one it's one voice right yeah. it's a fucking play well the same thing with Game of Thrones Roy Detrice does like several different he's passed away since then oh, you shit. remember the pyromancer in season 2 who's yeah, had yeah. all this spot? he's actually the audiobook reader for the books Whoa. he's a phenomenal phenomenal actor um, anyway so so when you when you when you do that I try to mix it in and it's like a reward okay mm. uh, but some books are so good like for instance I just finished Dan Martell's book Buy Back Your Time Every one of you who's reading this needs to read Buy Back Your Time. The beginning talks about basically this concept of do not hire to grow your company, hire to free up more of your time. If you did something that all it did was free up all of your time, yeah. you would eventually scale your company because you'd be more productive. Right. If all you did was the thing you wanted to do and spend all your time doing that. Like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get an assistant to help me with like the most, like I still do invites for some of my parties. Like yeah. I have a VA, I got, I'm training to do that. 
Like if you can buy back all your time, now look how much more productive you can get. That's how you go to eight, nine figures. That's the first thing. At the end of the book, though, he talks about the one thing, which basically he's he's kind of teaching the stuff that Gary Keller teaches in his book, The One Thing, which is basically if I go sales meeting, sales meeting, sales meeting, sales meeting, I'll get I'll have better sales meetings. But right. if I go sales meeting, accounting, and then I go play with my daughter and then go, you know, play video games, I'm because I'm switching gears so much, I actually do worse. Right, so for me, this is the fourth podcast I've done today. So I'm, I'm yeah. in a talkative mood. So that's the kind of is thing. Is that because it fucks up your flow state? Yeah. So you, mm. but you're getting into a flow state because the human brain is really good at doing one thing for a long time, like driving. I can listen to audiobooks for hours. I'm like really good at that one thing. If you can, if you can train yourself to do this one thing. Yeah. So stack all. So for instance, if you don't like doing sales calls, stack them all in one day and get right. into the sales call mood and do that all in on the Tuesday. And then Wednesday, it's all meetings. And then Thursday, right. it's all whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that is so fucking crazy. You, I don't know why when you started saying that, it just reminded me of this fucking like deep, deep thought in my brain about that. I'd always, when I used when I was really young, when I was much younger, when I was 18 or 19 years old, I used to work with my father. And I'd always notice like four hours into the job, we, we would just get so much more efficient and doing yes, everything. Of course. Because we'd be doing the same shit over and over and over. And then eventually like, oh, I, I got the fucking pattern now. Do, 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 and then yeah. everyone would be moving it super fast. The Power of Full Engagement by Tony Schwartz and The One Thing by Gary Keller. Read those and then it'll kind of explain. Oh, also Flow by Mihai Chesesmi. Yeah. Th those books will, will get you to understand this concept. Or you can just listen to what I'm saying, which is stack like tasks on top of each other and you will get phenomenally good right. at whatever you're doing. So only fuck your wife all day, you guys. Th yeah, this, fuck this, your this, wife. You <laughs> Why fucking is only on Thursdays and then just do it several times. Yeah, exactly. That's what like, I'm saying. I'm so Gatorade, uh, <laughs> yeah. water and everything. People hate leg day. Well, I would only, uh, uh, leg day is only going to be a certain day a week because you know that's when Jesus the hell is Christ, coming. Jesus Tom Platts. Yeah, oh, some yeah. people hate, some people, I hate leg day. Dude, I've when had are you going to get Tom, dude, that is one guy I've always wanted to interview. He's on my fucking bucket list. I want to trend leg day with Tom Platts and I want to have him on because like I got so, like I was about to, um, I, I was about to, like I was about to do like a little mentorship and stuff with like, um, Oh, what's his name? I'm. So, I feel. I, I just literally lost his name. I'm so sorry. But like, basically, there, there was this guy I was gonna was gonna like get would talk to and everything. I was gonna have him on my show, and then he passed away. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he's in the uh, red pill space. And oh, so, you Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels. Yeah, I was about. I was literally like a day or two away from actually talking to him. I, I was gonna do something like on style. I wanted to talk to him yeah. and stuff, and then he. Just passed away a couple days later, yeah. and I was like, "Jesus Christ!" Because I was fucking bullshitting around, just like, like literally. If you have the like, would you? How would you recommend to meet important people or like how to get into? The, I know in the whole network yes. life, it's yeah. So this is one of the things I teach, man. Like again, this is another thing I'm gonna tell you guys. If you have a product that you can explain away in two two sentences or like in a couple hours in a webinar, right. your your full product, you don't actually have a product. So give away your best stuff for free. So whenever I get, whenever I have my free course, my free course is so full of. Information so full of information. I don't hide stuff later. Okay, so your answer. This is a key thing. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories. I'm a, I'm a war history buff. Yeah, is uh, General General Hannibal okay. at the Ca Battle of Cannae, and General Hannibal. He's the one who took the, yeah, the he took the elephants, elephants across passed. the Swiss Alps, yeah. and then he defeated that Roman legion for a while. Then he got his ass kicked afterwards. But the point is. How did he defeat the Roman Legion? He surrounded them. So how do you get the top people on your podcast? You surround them. So what I do is, so for instance, I want so I want Hermosi on. So it's going to be Bradley, Neil Strauss. I'm sorry, Neil Patel. Then it's going to be um, Jay Cutler because he's into fitness. Right. Then I might have Ty Lopez. Then I'm going to have Kiyosaki because I know he follows all those mm -hmm. people. And I'm going to and I'm, I'm going to have either I'm going to send him a message saying these are all the people I interviewed, and or I'm going to have those people message him. If he says no, he just says no. He's just like, oh, this guy only has sixty thousand subs. I'm going to say no. Right. But the way that I found to get bigger and bigger guests is to surround them. You surround them by, by like having all these people that they know say you need to go on this guy's show. Does that make sense? That, that makes perfect sense. So surround. So just think about the Battle of Kanai. How did they defeat the? They surrounded them. They made. They got to the point where it's like, dude, everyone. I don't know who this guy is, but everyone is telling me to have him on my show, and that's essentially what you do. It's like what happened with Andrew Tate. Remember, yeah. every like I heard of Andrew Tate, and then everyone told me about Andrew Tate, right. and then I got a message from Andrew Tate on on uh, on um. On Instagram, and then we started messaging on WhatsApp, and it was like, oh, now everyone knows. So now I gotta have this guy on my show. You know what I'm saying? No, no, that is actually. So I've been doing. I, I don't know. I don't know if I've been doing that deliberate of a thing, but I'm doing a somewhat a version of that, but yeah. not to the same. Because I mean, this is why it's important to read books, you guys. And there's a lot of great information. I'm still. You know, one thing I'm really glad about is that people still are making books. Yeah. 
you know, uh, books are great. Yeah, which are great. Now, do you think we've slowed down in the amount of books being created? So, so here, here's what's happened: is the podcast method and the book method are starting to conflate. If you listen to mm. David Goggins' books, in between chapters, he does a podcast episode in between each chapter now. And so, what's happened is you need for me. I'm I'm the entertainment podcast. I've sort of slowed down on, and I'm going straight after books that help build my business because I have a responsibility. I have 17 guys who work for me. And I need to be as informed as I can on these different subjects. So right. for instance, I will tell you paying taxes is not my strong suit. Uh, like I, it's something I've, I'm getting a crash course in this year um, because I've had to pay so much in taxes. That that was one of the things where like I need to learn more. So I'm going to read a book on that. And then building sales funnels. God, man, you all you guys are listening to this, man. There's I don't take people seriously who have not read the $100 million offer. I don't take people seriously who don't read Traffic Secrets. I don't. If you are telling me that you run a, a SaaS business or you run uh, you're a digital nomad and you have not read those books, I don't take you seriously. I seriously, there there is so much incredible information in audiobooks that cost $12. I can't. It's too much. It's so <laughs> many great books. And that's why I have this book list. Yeah. It's like, oh, where do I start, Michael? I just have a 30-book book list. Go through the book list. And it, there's so much incredible information that, that's out there for free. And all you have to do, like, there's so many ways to make money right now. It's crazy. That's why I just, whenever I hear the inflation talk and the doom and, yeah. oh my God, the candidates are pro LBGT. I don't give a shit, bro. I'm rich. I'm, I'm going to so, make some money. I don't give a fuck about any of this. So do you only listen to people? So obviously, do you only people? Do you only listen to people who is like, that's all I do. Like all I do is crypto or all I do is this. All I do is that. I would, I would switch it up. I definitely would switch it up. But like, even if you're selling a crypto course, what you need to be looking at is how do I hire a sales team? Yep. How do I build a sales funnel? How do I do organic? How do I do affiliate? How do I do paid? And how do I get on other people's podcasts? Right. I would look at all those things because you already have the crypto information. Does that make sense? No, I, I meant in terms of, um, in terms of who you're listening to, in terms of who you taking seriously because obviously when you're saying like these in these influencers like this guy made us money off of solar mm -hmm. and he's talking telling you about recessions coming like where who do you listen to in terms uh, of like that's good you know what i'm saying uh i would look for proof in the pudding right okay. so one of the things i love with alex ramosi is that alex ramosi is telling you how he made money yeah one of the things he says is this is not every way to make money but this is exactly what i did to make money right. and i believe him because i can see the valuation of his company yeah. and this dude made a lot of money right he lived listen those those units over at he lives over at waldorf astoria that is those units are not cheap bro you know what well, i'm saying how much are we talking on those units i don't know they're really expensive like several million dollars to buy one gotcha. right but like that that's the thing like when you see that uh, when you see that concept, for me, I would listen to him. I, when, when Robert Kiyosaki tells me about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if he if he pulled it off, then I'm going to listen to his advice, and then I'm going to see if his advice matches up the real world. And Kiyosaki, it does. It does match up with the real world. When he talks about assets versus liabilities and using debt in order to make money, that's not incorrect. It's right. That's he, he is correct about that, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If he starts giving me advice on what we should do with Ukraine, I don't know, Robert. I'm going to listen, but I don't know if that's necessarily what I'm going to, you know, what, what I'm going to agree with. So, so I have to ask this. So sometimes and when you meet, you meet really important people, do you sometimes, I mean, it's it's sort of like the halo effect or sort of, it's sort of like being surrounded by a bunch of hot chicks you just listen to more because they're more interesting. Like, because I, I there, there is a certain level of like, like uh, obviously you have a huge amount of experience in this. I, I Where, look for testimonials. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look for testimonials. Like okay. for instance, if I want a book on social circle, I, I'm gonna listen to what Bulzarian did. Because I've been there. I've seen it. Guys, it's more real than you think with Bulzarian. It's like, it's even crazier than you think. Like, he doesn't pay them, and they fight each other to fuck him. That is real. I swear. He lives right near next to this fucking building. I've been there. I've seen it. I've seen women go into his house and say, there is no way I'm going to fuck Bulzarian. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And then they fuck him. Like, I've seen it happen. So if Dan's watching this, he'll tell you it's the truth. I've seen it with my own eyes. And so for, for when, when I see that for real, I'm like, okay, since I know this is true, then he writes the book and I'm like, does the book match up with my objective reality? And right. it does one to one, except I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have $400 million and 32 million people follow me on IG, but I can still in a micro way follow what he was doing. So when it comes to social circle, I'm going to listen to Bulzarian. When it comes to uh, real estate, I'm going to listen to my friends who are selling real estate. I might right. listen to Kiyosaki. Uh, I have some friends of mine who do credit repair. I'm going to listen to my credit repair. Got my first Chase uh, Sapphire card today, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do my, do my credit repair. I might repair. need that for a second. Like, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to max out my fucking credit right yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for people who've done it before and can show me some level of expertise. I'm still checking, though. I'm not going to be stupid about it. Right. I'm still going to check. But like when it comes to Social Circle Game, 
Um, I'm sorry, it's going to sound arrogant. I'm the best coach that's it's ever lived when it comes to social circle. In fact, to the point where no one else has ever really taught social circle before me. And so when I, if somebody wants to learn that kind of game, I'm the only show in town. I like really, because there's pickup artists who'd like do a side course on social circle, but they don't know what they're doing. And then they look at my social media and they're like, oh no, no this is what we really want. Right. I teach like, again, Bulzarian doesn't teach a course on social circle game. If he did, I, the course he would teach is the course I teach. Same thing with Dan Fleischman, same thing with Ty Lopez, same thing with Hugh Hefner. Like the things that they did that they never taught, I teach in my course from a, but from a scientific perspective. And that's the reason why my course does so well. That's the reason why I, you know, we, we quadruple every year. Right. And so when you understand these concepts, uh, th then, then it gets really easy. So you look for testimonials. So since, since I have a hundred testimonials on my website, you should probably say, okay, this might work. Yeah. And then I give you a free course and you do the free course and you're like, holy shit, I got my, these girls are like hitting me up. Okay. Then maybe this works. Then I would go forward with it. But you know, that's the thing. A lot of people don't want to do, dude, I was watching this thing the other day. So, you know, cupping, you know, the yeah, thing yeah, they do the with cup. athletes, yeah, yeah. there's no science behind it. I've looked up tons of research that it doesn't seem to do anything. And I was watching yesterday uh, that that show quarterback on Netflix and I'm yeah. watching I'm watching Patrick Mahomes who makes who's got a contract for 500 million dollars and he's getting cupped. And I'm like I don't understand. How the fuck is this possible? Do you know that chiropractors, I love it. I know some of you guys are my friends. I'm not trying to denigrate you and some of you actually do some cool stuff, but chiropractic in general, there's no science behind it. Reiki healing, there's no science behind it. There is no science behind it. And, but these people do it. And I'm like, some of the smartest people in the world are still trying this stuff. And it, I'm watching Kirk Cousins getting a chiropractor. And I'm like, no, bro, what you need is a physiotherapist, not a chiropractor. Right. But they're still doing it. And it's just one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen where it's like uh, people don't look. For, if you spent 10 minutes looking up the, the documentation on some of these things, is, is there any science behind it? You'd be like, okay, this makes sense. Or, okay, this doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, I don't do research. No, yeah, of course. No, most, no, people, no, most people don't do research. No, no, no. I just follow whatever the important people are doing. Yeah, but you, but you even know. You can tell a guy, hey, just so you know, don't put your whole life savings into crypto right now because it could go up or it could go down. You'll say that to them. And they don't hear it. And then they put their whole life savings in crypto. Then they lose their money and they blame you. Why is it? Because they didn't do any research. That's the reason why. <laughs> don't put all your money into one crypto coin. For and sure. Then they go all in, everything. And then it goes down 90%. And they're Mortgage like... Mortgage my house. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Play Michael Saylor again. I just for everyone to hear that. Again. Well, I said, well, Bitcoin is the best crypto. Asset. Okay, what's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right. There is no second best. Okay. But take all your money, buy Bitcoin. Then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. Then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it. Go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it, and convert <laughs> so the funny. proceeds into the hardest the way money the music on stops. Earth. Yeah. That's so funny. I love it. And that. the music stops too. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah. But like it, it is kind of crazy because like you're right. I mean, he's like a zealot. He's but like I think he's actually a good dude and stuff. But he, most of these guys, they go on this huge tirade during the bull market to get money. And then they fucking exit or like they kind of fuck over their investors and they exit and they sell all the assets. This guy's still holding on to a shit. So it's like at the very least, this guy's a true believer. Uh -huh. But he will have to sell because I've seen some of the I look sure. at some of his loans. Like he has to sell sometime before 26 and 28. He okay. has to sell. You ready? You want to go viral? Yeah, we're going to go viral, right? Okay, here we go. You don't believe, at least I hope you don't, that Shaquille O'Neal or Tom Brady were deliberately trying to defraud people when they supported FTX. They were just taking money. No, yeah, they were just taking money. No, and no, almost no one in there, like I actually, it's just they didn't really look into what they were in. Beautiful. So, so that's my point. Yeah. Not only did they not look into it, I believe that they didn't have the mechanism to look into it. Like yeah. they didn't even know what to know, what to know who to ask what to know right. to know whether or not this was legit. You with me? No, I'm with you 100%. Okay, so now we understand that. And I personally, although he's done some shitty shit, I don't think that um, that when Logan Paul does the crypto zoo thing, his intent is to defraud people, right? I don't think his intent was to defraud, but he did defraud people, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay, and he could pay them back, but he's not paying them back. So that's pretty shitty, right? Is that a lawyer thing, you think, or just okay, being so, shitty? Okay, so, so the thing is, I you're right. I think it's his attorney saying, if you admit to one of these things being wrong, you're going to have a flood of lawsuits. So what I think they're going to mm -hmm. try to do is try to get into They're going to go after the biggest losers first and get them to sign NDAs, and then just go down the list. I, if I was going to guess, that's what he's going to do. But yeah. the point is, he didn't do his due diligence. The point, the point is, if you had a conversation with Logan Paul, you would run circles around him when it comes to crypto. You would imagine. Yeah, I, Am I, I correct? Would, I would have told him, do not, like, make it an art piece. Don't make it a fucking game. I, okay. don't, know, I don't know why you're trying to launch a game okay. with this. So, 
he then goes out with a girl yeah. who makes him wait to have sex with him. Okay. And then after, after she makes him wait to have sex, then he proposes to her. Logan Paul has some options with women. Can we agree? Yeah. More options than I do. More options than all of us. Yeah. More Logan Paul has millions of women he could be with. And he chooses to be with this 31-year-old woman when he's 27, by the way, or 28. A harlot? Yeah. So he does this and then come to find out she's been with a lot of men. No. A lot of, no. lot of, lot of men. I showed it to my clients today. We were on the, uh, we were on the call and I'm showing Dylan Dallas' Dallas's. Yeah. Over 81 uh, people. Yeah. And it's so, it's so crazy. It's like, and, and like we were, we had gone through 21 people and the guys were like, dude, I'd dump her. And I was like, oh, cool. Cause we're not even a quarter of the way done. And yeah. it was like, after a while, at first you're like, man, that's kind of low brow what, you know, Dylan Dennis is doing. That's kind of fucked up. But after like 40 or 50 people, you're like, no, Dylan Dennis is doing the world a service. Yeah. Like this is ridiculous, bro. This is crazy. You made Logan Paul. Oh, wait, any guy out there, you're like, hey, dude, if you're high status enough, a woman won't cheat on you. Bullshit. The problem isn't if she cheats on you. The problem is if she cheats on you, then you make excuses to your boys why you took her back. And then she cheats on you again. That's the problem. Here's the real question. Does she make Leo wait? Of course not. That's the point. Look, the question is, you need to say when a girl makes you wait, you need to ask. Like, again, if I bought a car, if I bought a, a TV for a thousand dollars and then I found out this other guy bought it for fifty dollars. Fuck you. I'm not buying this TV from you for a thousand dollars. He bought it for fifty dollars. Yeah. Right. If you are going to not make you're going to make me wait, but you're not going to make this dude wait. What she was is a social climber. And she got to the final boss. She got to Bowser at the end of Super Mario Brothers, which was Logan Paul. And then she was like a new strategy. You remember what I said before? Women don't need to date in order to get better at dating, but men do. This is a woman who got so good at dating, she figured out how to trick a dude into marrying her by fronting like she hadn't been with a bunch of dudes, when in reality, she sucked a dick in a full fucking uh, football stadium. I didn't make that up. She literally said that, okay? So it's like this woman is, you know, she's fronting like she's a trad con woman, but in reality, she's Brittany Renner. You know, and so, so what, what happens in the situation is what is the common theme? What did, what did uh, Logan not do? He didn't do any research and this dude has way more resources than we do. Right. But in fact, what, what, how much money is he all with these people for, for uh, crypto? Is it like 12 million, 20 million? It's like 6 million. Okay. 6 like, million. Yeah. That, that 6 million is a rounding error for this dude. Yeah. 6 million. This is not a problem for him to pay, pay these he people back. He makes so much of a prime. He could have paid that off, off of one it's month. It's mad, madness. Like you should pay this off, but you go slowly and you say, Hey, listen, I made a mistake. This is what happened. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to defraud people. And I paid everybody back. He would have so much goodwill. If Logan Paul, if I was Logan Paul's attorney, I would be like, okay, here's what happens. You got to win this fight. Okay. And then after you win this fight, you go a little underground with the thing. You break off the engagement maybe two, three months down the road, okay? Yeah. You move on. You de- you're already dating. So- you don't even break it off. You're already dating someone, other girl before anyone notices. And then on the deal, you pay everyone back, and you sh- keep that shit on the download, and then you're good. That's what he should t- do. I'm going to tell you right. I already figured out a way he could do this shit and get away. Say, hey, you guys, we're upgrading the NFT, you guys. Um, in this website, if you turn in your NFT here, we're going to upgrade to whatever the hell the NFT is called, version two. You're going to get two NFT drops plus a pack. And it the problem, the problem is that sounds like a scam. Even though what you're saying is not a scam, yeah. it sound. If I'm on the outside looking in, I'm like, I'm going to turn in my NFT. The fuck are you talking about? I'm not going to do that. Well, I would pay the, I would just pay the it, back. It's just if if it's a legal sort of thing. But there's that happens sometimes in co- coins where like if there's a bri- if there's a bridge hack that which is like a way to turn this coin over to a different network. It's like they're they're completely different like uh, coding languages. Mm-hmm. So moving this coin over to this other coding languages, there, there's like an intermediate. Sometimes like a hack, the coin has to be up to another level so you could do sure. that in a way with an nft but this is like they don't have this person people on the team of course this yeah of course they, they just because because what happened is like one of the problems I, I meet this a lot of a lot of times with my friends who are very rich or very popular the people that surround them are yes men mm. and they say yes like there's a, there's certain influencers that i'm friends with that i don't hang out with every day because there's this pit of vipers that are around them all the time and i'm the one guy who comes around who never asked for money and never asked to meet women because i'm always bringing women and so they're like, fuck Michael Sartain. I don't want him to hang around. So they talk shit about me. So I'm like, I'd rather just not hang out with you. There's a couple of guys that I know that run Fortune 500 companies, a couple of guys that I know that are yeah. professional athletes, and a couple of guys that I know that are, um, that are uh, what do they call, huge social media influencers. And when I hang out with them, it's only for a few days. And then as soon as the fucking yes men come around, I'm out the door. I don't want to fucking be a part of this. Right. My life is good. I don't need your money. And I do it in part because I don't need their money. And what usually happens is after a couple years, it takes them a couple years. And like all those dudes who were lying to me, they're gone. There's some of them were trying to sue me. Half of them tried to fuck my girl. And then Michael Sartain never did shit. He, yeah. Everything he said was the truth. He never lied to me. He only brings girls whenever we hang out. And he's never asked me for money. So eventually, it usually takes a couple years. And they're like, okay, this dude's legit. All these other dudes are fucking fakers. But I don't ever try to prove it to them. I just show it. Right. 
You do that for a while, and what you'll notice is that these guys, they don't have good research. I have a friend I know right now who's he's starting, he's doing a dating course, and he's got a huge following, whatever. And the thing is, I know the guys that are doing the course for him, and they don't know what they're doing. And I was like, and I was like, hey, man, I, I just, I'll do it for free. I'll help you guys out yeah, for yeah. free. And they didn't say yes to me. And I'm like, you're going to do a social circle course without me yeah. is legitimately like saying Tom Brady is willing to help you with a quarterback course and you're saying no. It is ridiculous, but they don't know better. Because why? Because only yes men who are uninformed are surrounding this person, so they don't know They don't know what they don't know. That's essentially yeah. what happens. And, and there's also this other thing too, with that, because I kind of I kind of know a little bit of these people in this space and stuff. What they also say behind the behind the scenes is, don't no, no, I'm not going to work with Sartain because he's going to steal my people behind my... Yeah, that, no, that's, no, that's, that's, that's legit. So there, <laughs> there's a couple of people that I've worked with that have like their own social circle product and then they legitimately said that if you came to my face and say oh, I don't want you yeah no if they came to my face and said I legitimately don't want to work with you because you're going to steal my clients I hundred percent you know what I'm going to say it fuck it I've been meaning to not say this but I don't care I'm going to say this for your court uh for your thing there's a there's a dude uh we call him the fat kid in Brazil I'm not even going to say what his name is, but you guys all know who he is. You guys, he, yeah, he, yeah. he makes, just look up mentions of me. He makes videos about me all the time. Uh, the reason why I don't say his name is because he doesn't deserve any publicity from me. Right. I, I zoomed past him on YouTube. But the other reason why I don't really confront him is because I have so many clients from him. I yeah. literally should drop this guy a check for 20K for commissions <laughs> for all the clients I have stolen from him. Yeah. I steal clients from this dude every week. And he doesn't know. Like, if he figured out that I, that I was stealing his clients. He stopped talking about you. Oh, yeah. he would. He, he would first, he stopped talking about me. He'd hire someone. He'd hire a hitman if he knew how many clients. Oh. I have so. I the have people, one? Dude, I have probably five, six guys in my company that took his course. And they all they do is badmouth this dude. And then I, and then I, and then, but like, the thing is, I need him to keep operating and talking shit about me. Because what happens is, whenever he talks shit about me, he's no, he, he he made the mistake the first time, but afterwards he stopped doing it. Mm. He he kind of alludes to my social media. Then people go to my social media and they're like, "Oh wait, this guy talks to way out of girls than you do." Yeah. And I steal so many of his clients; it's crazy. So that's why I kind of don't mind that he he says shit about me like this. That that's why it works really good. It's the same thing happened with like me and um, Gary the numbers guy. Gary the numbers guy would talk shit about me, and I'd get more followers from it because they'd see, oh, this guy's actually rational, and this right. guy's a moron. And so that's essentially what happened. Same thing with my debate with Destiny. After the debate with Destiny, I got so many followers after that because people were like, oh, this is a rational way of looking at things that isn't like so anti red pill. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's essentially what happens, and that's what you want. It's like. A lot of people won't work with me. It's Jay Cole who was saying this. Like yeah, yeah. I, after a while, like I stopped. People stopped rapping with me because I would I would do better than them. Right. And so a lot of people stopped doing interviews with me because they would be like they'd be offering a, a dating course, and then I'd have a dating course. I'm like, oh yeah, in my dating course, you know. And then I'd show a picture of a guy who's like four foot eleven who had like seventeen girls around him. He'd be like, yeah, uh, my dating course. You end up showing up with like a hundred girls, and they're like, uh, okay, we're gonna take your course instead. And I'd be like, well, and also it's not a dating course. So you're right. That's ex essentially what happens sometimes. So. <laughs> I know, I know exactly who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. I'm not gonna. Oh, I don't even want to say the letter that, that starts with. No, don't worry about. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but like that guy's first name or whatever. I've, I've found so much in it. There's so many people with that name or a, a version of that name that just we've had a, such a big problem with in the red yeah. pill. It's insane the amount of people I could say, but. It is what it, it kind of it kind of is what it hey, is. Let, let me tell you something about haters. Okay, yeah. this is something I've learned, and I'm I'm terrible at, at dealing with haters because I, I I engage yeah. with them and I got to stop doing it. Uh, there's a saying I like to say, and, and that is Stalin and Hitler weren't friends. Mm. They made a pact in, in Poland yeah. so they could attack the rest of the world, but they weren't friends. Even though they were both bad and they made a pact, the pact always breaks. I want, to, I want you to know that if you and other successful people make a unified front, you'll stay together because you're successful. Right. The haters can't make a unified front. Because eventually they start hating on each, each other. other. Yep. You notice these red pill mm -hmm. guys, they're coming after Rolo, but now they're suing each other. You see that how this is happening? Now they're all suing each other when before they were just like, I, someone needs to make a YouTube channel that's just called Red Pill Lawsuits. And all they do is go over like Red Pill Lawsuits be hilarious. But like, that's essentially what happened. I always like to say, Hitler and Stalin weren't best friends, even though they were on the same side for a little bit before, yeah, yeah. Ni before 1939, 30, 1940, before, 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 the, before the invasion. Yeah, yeah. Even though they were like that, they weren't friends. Yeah. Mussolini and Hitler weren't friends. They were on the same side, but they weren't friends. Haters cannot cr provide a unified front. Right. Haters cannot provide a unified front. Winners can provide a unified front. That's why if I do a mastermind, it's good uh, for sure. It's Wes Watson. It's it's uh, Dan Fleischman. Yep. It's Brad Lee. It's Rollo Tomasi. It's uh, it's it's um, 
Ju it's Waller. It's all those guys. As soon as I do my mastermind, it's fucking Sosnick. That's my mastermind because those are my those are my mentors. Those are the guys yeah. I look up to. Those are, that's my cohort immediately. And we can provide a unified front because we're all winners who make money with each other. Right. The haters, they can't. They, it's a, one hater here is like a 15 year old kid who's masturbating in his mom's basement, and this hater over here is just like some fucking weirdo. And they they can't they're not, they can't join together and do anything, so they're they're really always going to lose in the end. Now, there's something that we had a, we had discussion before we did the show and stuff that it was like it like blew my fucking mind and stuff. I was in my car and stuff, almost ran off the road. <laughs> but but um, we were we were talking about like most haters are just like fucking 15 year olds, or yeah, losers. Yeah. So so it was actually John Zerka who told me this. We yeah. were what, me and Zerka did a um, a thing with with Rollo one time, and afterwards he goes, Hey Rollo, you have to do a book called The Rational Teenager. I was like, really? I was like, Ooh. yeah. And, and he goes, the rational team. And I was thinking about it. I was like, man, that's crazy. And then he goes, so, so all respect to Mr. Beast. Okay. Yes. I don't watch his content. I can't watch his content. It's not, it's just unwatchable. It's not for you. It's not for me. It's un, like a, a dude perfect. It's like occasionally I can watch some dude perfect, but it's just unwatchable. The early stuff from Logan and Jake Paul, all respect to those. Like Logan has a great podcast. Good for him. But his early stuff, this, the Vine stuff, it's yeah. just unfucking watchable. And I was like, who is watching this stuff? And then, I, and then the other question I had was, I would look at these haters that would comment on the stuff, right. and then I would be in a room full of men who are millionaires, like when we do the Avengers yeah, stuff yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. and I'd be like, how many of you guys have commented on a YouTube video? None of them. None of them. None of them did. I was like, so successful people don't comment on YouTube videos, they don't get in Twitter beefs, and they don't comment on TikTok videos, yeah. right? And, but there's still millions of people who are watching Mr. Beast and PewDiePie yeah. So who the fuck are these people? And you realize they're fifteen year old kids. Yeah, there's there's like fifteen year old kids who are the mass of this audience. And I'm like, dude, how come the comments when I'm on Fresh and Fit are fucking horrible, horrible things they're saying about the girls, me saying horrible things about Fresh, Myron, Rolla, whatever. Yeah. And then when they do the super chats, they're always nice. Like, what's going on here? And then I realize it's fifteen year old kids who don't have money who are talking the shit. <laughs> Say and, that again. And, and that then is so fucking. And then boring. guys who actually have money. They're actually, they have constructive comments. Correct. Like a 15 year old kid is going to look at it and be like, fuck this guy. He's a simp because X, Y, Z. He wasn't mean to that girl. He right. didn't kick that girl off, whatever. And then the other guy's going to be like, oh, Michael Sartani said he had a book list where I can make like $20 million. What's the name of that book list? Michael, tell me, tell me the name of that book list. W winners want to make money. Yeah. And it's boring. But it's that's how you make money, dude. If, the way to make money is always it's usually fucking boring, boring. dude. I yeah. love Cody. Shout out to Cody Sanchez. Cody Sanchez, she'll sit there and she'll be like, "You should buy a coin operated laundry mat next to an apartment complex that doesn't have uh, the, the, that doesn't the, have the washing machines." Mats. Yeah, yeah. Bro, do you want to know what your risk is on that? Like nothing, nothing zero, nothing, bro. That is an incredible strategy, 20%. dude. I have, I have a buddy of mine. He, uh, one of my clients, he he opened morticians. You want to know one business that did not lose any business during COVID? COVID? <laughs> morticians, bro. And I was like, as soon as he was explaining to me like what his markup was for being a mortician, I was like. I could see a future where I owned like 20 morticians, like 20 <laughs> morticians, like, you know what I'm saying? Mortuaries. Dude, that, you want to talk about the most recession proof Business. industry, super boring. When you make a lot of money, bro, it's boring. Yeah. It's really boring. Also guys who are really good with women. If you watch them take home women, you want to know what it looks like. It's boring. They're like, Oh, what's up? Cool. Yeah. No, we're going to go do this thing later. You want to come? You don't have to come with it. It's like super chill. And they walk off and the girl just follows them. It's boring. If you watch pickup artists, they're spinning girls around, it's, barking at them. That's bad game. Do, good game is boring. Do you think we have that fucked up? No, no. Okay. I, I want, because when, when, it, what was the year when you turned 18 more or less? I turned 18 in uh, 1996. Okay. So you pre so you you're predating a lot of the fucking like POA shit that kind of came. Well, well, we, got look, I got Neil Strauss's number in my phone and I got Mystery's number in my phone. Like no, I'm no. I'm friends with Eric von Markovic right yeah. now. Like I, we text on uh, on Insta on we we text on uh Facebook Messenger. I when when Mystery makes his reappearance, I'm going I'm going to bring I him can't. back out. I'm going to bring him back out. So yeah. okay, I was about to ask you about that. So okay, so so you you were you became eighteen you became like you know into your adult life and stuff before this stuff really got yeah. popularized and stuff right now obviously I know that book happens in the early very early two thousands you're talking about Katrina yeah it happened yeah. during Hurricane Katrina that's when yeah. the game came out by Neil right. Strauss yeah yeah so um, was it like was 
have we because obviously there's all these old books, all these pickup. Have these books have always kind of fucked the way we kind of look at picking up chicks? No, no. The problem is if you do everything right, pickup works. But the problem is most guys don't do everything right. They're mm. still weird. Trying, they're like it, it, it's so hard to get uncalibrated. And also, I don't think we know enough about autism spectrum disorder. And like what happens is these guys are like they can't. Some of them can't really be fixed, yeah. and they're using pickup to try to fix them, and it, it, it doesn't work, and it ends up becoming really bad. Pickup net net has made more dudes weird than it's made than it's got guys laid right Sheesh. and the other problem is it teaches guys to like ignore feedback so like right. you know reframe pimp game i'm gonna reframe everything's a reframe and the girl didn't fuck me because i didn't use this gambit and i need to bark at her and all this kind of shit and the problem is it didn't it didn't help you calibrate i just had a debate right before this debate right it was social circle game versus a cold approach and my whole thing is he was like telling me that Cold approach helped you calibrate. And I'm like, and this is a very good looking, tall Australian, Australian man, man yeah. explaining <laughs> that cold approach helps you calibrate. And I'm like, bro, I've got clients that are like short Indian men who do a social circle game and they're surrounded by women all the time. They're the ones who are calibrated. Wait, so you tell me there's hope. Of course it's hope, bro. There's like, like, dude, if you're a man, don't, you, don't, are don't, so, don't black you are so lucky to be a man. I don't care what you look like, how short you are, whatever. You are so lucky to be a man because the ways that which you can get women are infinite and the ways you can get money are even more infinite if you are willing to drop your ego and to learn right. i'm not selling you shit by the way my book list free just go on the school server i'll give it to you for free it's free these books half of them you can get for free yeah. or they're 12 you know one credit on audible whatever 12 bucks you should like I, I would spend every penny i had or getting as many books as i could to like learn there's so many ways to make money now bro there's so many ways to get women right now bro it's competency and relevancy you just show that on your social media and you could do that. It's fucking incredible. You are so lucky to be a man. Yeah. If you're a woman and you're unattractive, bro, I mean, you got to go to Columbia and uh, just get fuck tons of surgery done. And that's your only shot, man. And you can't turn back the clocks at the hands of time sometimes. If you're a dude and you're just like not been good with women your whole life, then all of a sudden you can like, look at Jeff Bezos is a short dude who was out of shape. And now he's like fucking jacked and he's worth billions of dollars. Like there's ways to do it. And there's ways to do it without money. Again, right. I, I, I bring up Joel Alvarez, yeah. Black Tape Project. Dude's like 5'9", banging the, like, Joel Alvarez makes me, Joel Alvarez, real talk, and I don't, like, Joel Alvarez would probably make Bilzerian jealous with some of the girls he's been with. And, and like, he's been with these most stunning women. And when you realize that, that he's been with these stunning women, you're like, well, how is he able to do it? He doesn't use money. It's like I said before, he lower middle class fame. Lower middle class fame is this like celebrity fame that you celebrity. What is it called? A local celebrity thing that you can do to in order to build your status. Is, is that Black Tape Project that whole runway show where they? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Dude, that shit went so fucking viral. Yes. it was in fucking. You know, it, it was like you couldn't escape on Instagram anywhere. It was just girls with black tape covering yeah. themselves. Shout up. out to insane. Paradise Challenge. Uh, we're going to Puerto Vallarta the seventeenth to the twenty third of. September, if you guys want to come with us to Puerto Vallarta, hit me up. Mostly ladies, we're looking for more ladies to come sign up to do the to do it. Seven days, <laughs> uh, seven days of uh, all inclusive photo shoot. I'm the host of it. I host the bikini competition and I host the Black Tape Project. Yeah, so that is crazy because that literally went viral because people were like, "Holy!" Crap. Yeah, dressing women with electrical tape. Yeah. Insane. By the way, that's not electrical tape anymore. He's got his own patent on his own kind of tape that he does. Yeah, because it's, it was very like... Yeah, you know. there's, there's a thing you have to do where you put the tape on and then you have to put the body oil on afterwards. You can't put it on before because the tape will come off. Just absolutely incredible. Yeah, that, that, but like, again, what is it? It's competency. There's something that you do that makes you competent. There's dudes out there picking up chicks because they're funny on TikTok. Like there's a way to be competent and relevant. Now what I do, what I teach my guys, this is one of my favorite techniques is to show that other women approve of you show that other women like you. If you do that, then that, that comp, uh, compliance makes other women attracted because of mate choice copying. Again, stop the video if you want right now, look up on, on Wikipedia, whatever, look up mate choice copying. This is the concept of men, of women being attracted to a man because other women are attracted to him. Hmm. Very easy. In pickup or in red pill, they call it pre-selection or Rollo calls it dread. Right. Dread so the, con the, con the concept of pre-selection, very easy. I can't make you six foot three. I can't turn your eyes blue. I can't make you handsome, but I can teach you how to use pre-selection. And that's another attribute. That's why I'm saying that you're so lucky as a man. You're so lucky as a man to have all this information at your fingertips and to be able to change your life so easy. So that's the thing that's just, like, I just look for, I'm so excited. I wake up every day, you know, I love women, but I'm so excited. I, oh, I wake up every day. I'm in a man and I, there's so many things that I can accomplish. Yo, for all my anime nerves, Madara Ochia wasn't six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, most of your favorite anime guys are like five foot six, bros. Goku's like five, six. By the way, by the way, <laughs> most girls got with Dan because he was famous, not because he was rich. Yeah. Whatever anybody thinks, most cloud, cloud over money. It was definitely, and he admits this. He's like, one of my favorite quotes from Dan is, 
I wish I could pay prostitutes, but I'm not interested in women who are not super, super attracted to me. Mm. He goes, but I can't. He goes, I would pay prostitutes if I could. He's like, but I want women who are like nuts about me. And the fame make, made the girls nuts. And I've seen it. What happens is it's not, whenever he has like a thing, like where he does like a photo shoot or whatever, yeah. it's never two or three girls. It's always eight, 10, 16 girls. And what, he does nothing. He doesn't approach them. He doesn't hit on them. And then eventually they get, they start competing over him. And that was a technique that I learned, but it's like, instead of at Bilzerian's house, it's Babes in Toyland Charity. Right. It's Model Citizen Fund. It's Smash Global. It's Wet Republic Bikini Competition. Mm. It's a Swimsuit USA. It's Black Tape Project. Those are other things that you can do to get that three to one, four to one, seven to one girl, girl to guy ratio. And then you can get the same kind of thing where guys are competing. And if you guys don't understand this concept, please read the book, uh, The Setup by Dan Bilzerian. Absolutely, you gotta read that. Now, just to go back to the the, the point I was making beforehand, um, so obviously you've seen you've seen what it was before and then after and stuff like that. So I mean, what what I mean, what from like the mystery era still? I mean, because I, I what from the mystery era still survives today that's usable? It's numbers game. Oh, a lot of it. No, I mean, the numbers game survives. The problem is what happened was it, it what they were doing really worked well before social media. Like like pickup was really effective before social media. Is that because people didn't know about it? No, it's because no, it's because it's because that was the most effective way. Of, okay, let me see if yeah, I can yeah, use an yeah. example. We'll say 05 is when things kick off with MySpace. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So before 05, yes. you would go out to a club, and if a girl wanted to show off her new dress, her new boobs, how hot she was, whatever, she couldn't do it on social media unless she was literally in Vogue, She in the magazine Vogue, yeah. she had to go to a club. She had to go. And by her going to a club, what would happen? Oh, she would expose herself to more high-status men at the club, and the likelihood of those men having sex with her was much higher. Now, after social media comes out, you have some women still going out to the club for validation, but a lot of them can get validation from just posting a photo. For men, we're, for men, we get our validation from sex. For women, they get a validation from attention. They're addicted right. to attention. So that attention that they would get from a club pre-2005, they're getting it from social media. So they don't have to go out. Now, let's get to 2019, and now we got OnlyFans. Now I can get attention and money, boatloads of money. So now what you end up with is a girl who like stays at home, fills content, by, films content by herself at home mm. with her dog or with her, not with her dog. Obviously, if you have a dog on, on OnlyFans, they, they get rid of your only fans by the way i don't know if you know this it's Whoa. bestiality yeah 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 well yeah well <laughs> yeah of a i've had a good like a girl tell me one time she's sitting there in the bathtub and a dog comes up and licks her toe uh, uh, only fans ejected gone tart tote completely gone um so but no <laughs> like she she films like porn with her husband yeah or she films just by herself and she never leaves the house she postmates everything never leaves her fucking you know two million dollar home that she right, has right? right and she has a bunch of airbnb tucci cash tucci cash has a bunch of airbnbs right she's she used all her money to make that so what's happened is now remember this girl in order to get her validation had to go out to the club now she doesn't so what i have to do is i have to put, put up what's called a bbd bigger better deal on social media, the Maxim Party, the Playboy Mansion, Bulzarian's Ignite events, Party, these, these, events, these, these events, and the BBD that I use on social media gets her to come out of her tunnel and come hang out with you. It's so funny because Richard Hart from Hex who said yeah, this. Yeah. I am com I am completely uh, convinced that really beautiful women do not go to. You never see them at Starbucks. You never see them out. And I was like, dude, you are one hundred percent correct. Yep. The way you do it is by throwing these amazing events. Richard Hart, right again. And the girls come out to these events like they will again one more time. Uh, uh, Babes in Toyland. Third, if you guys don't believe anything I'm saying, come to Babes in Toyland at On the Record Thursday night and tell me you don't see the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life. And right. you, and the first question you're going to ask yourself is like, where are the dudes? How come there's no dudes here? And the reason why is because it's a charity event. For whatever reason, dudes don't come to charity events. Girls come to charity. If you have a an animal rescue charity, you're going to get five girls for every guy that show right. up. It's crazy. So anyway, so so that's what will happen. And so you'll use the events to get these girls to come out. So that's why pickup doesn't work anymore is because social media made it so that the cold approach stuff doesn't like the, you're colding approaching women who just aren't attractive or aren't as available. Yeah. And that's what happens. You can still go do cold approach at the mall. I don't know if you've seen this in Toronto. There's signs that literally say approaching strangers, you will go to jail. What? Like dudes are fighting against cold approach because women were complaining against it so much because most guys who do cold approach are just bad at it and they're, yeah. they creep girls out. So that's essentially what happened. So what I did was like they were doing pickup, you know, it's 1.0, 2.0. They're at pickup 10.0, yeah. but I've switched over to social circle 3.0. I've switched. Again, they're trying to get better at riding the horse and buggy, and I'm in a Lamborghini. Like I'm doing something. I'm, I'm, I'm into the new technology now, which is this. What? It, do you feel like this is like because like one thing that I was I uh, was talking to Rolo kind of in private and stuff was about is I was asking him, do you feel like the red pill is stagnated because it's just basically become like 
bitch, you're dumb because you're a girl. Bitch, you're this. Is because it, yeah. it feels like we we kind of were like evolving, like you know, more and more things were coming out, more books. I mean, it seemed like the whole space was like we were really learning more, and then it just kind of like kind of stopped or slowed. Yeah. So so let let me. I'll give you an example. Okay. If I do a video, and the video is. Um, Gain upper body muscle to get a 0 0.6, 1.65 to one hip to waist ratio, and that's going or hip to shoulder, waist to shoulder to waist ratio. That's going to make more women attracted to you. There's studies that yeah, show of this. Of course. Yeah. If I was going to do that, and then I told you your face starts to deform when you snore from sleep apnea, so do you, you know that uh, yeah, that, that, that the thing, tape. Yep. That, that thing that lifts up your nose, yeah. and they put mouth tape on so that you breathe through your nose. What I just gave you is fucking incredible advice that will change your life, right? And not go viral. If I had a second video and the video was modern woman 304 feminist gets destroyed by red pill, manosphere, whatever, 100,000 views, 200,000 views. The problem is the red meat, like in order for us to go viral in this space, we had to do things that were somewhat toxic. It's right. like, it's okay to hold women accountable. It's not okay to have an entire channel where all you do is, well, no, no, I'm, let me take that back. It's okay if you want to have an entire channel to hold women accountable because you can become a multimillionaire doing that. It's just, that's not what I want to do because yeah. one of the differences between like say Fresh and Fit, uh, whatever podcast and me is that I have a coaching program and I make, I make a, a money from my coaching program. Right. In order for me to have a coaching program, I can't keep telling you how they're wrong. I, I got to keep telling you what you you do to be right. I got to give you good advice. And that good advice is fucking boring. It's so boring. Yeah. But you will change your life. It causes you to have to do work. Fuck that. I don't want to do work. I want to watch Myron call these girls hoes. And by the way, I get sucked in. I watch that yeah. Clips <laughs> channel, bro. He dunks on these. Bro, it's a dunk contest. He dunks on these women. They take L after L. And right. I can't stop watching it. And it's made him a very wealthy man, but I can't do what Myron does. And so I need to do something different. I also can't do what Adam 22 does where it's like super lascivious. Like, how was it taking that big dick? I, I'm not going to do a show like that. <laughs> I'm not going to do a fucking show like that. So oh, like, brother. what do I do? I want to be more constructive yeah. and I want to give people help. When I give people more help, again, who doesn't give people help? Logan and Jake Paul. They yeah. don't make content to like help you. They really don't. Bullshit Andrew Tate, Andrew yeah. Tate does to a certain extent, but he also holds people accountable. But he says some crazy, you know, some, sometimes he says some crazy stuff. For me, I want to help people. So because I want to help people, my content is less entertaining than, say, Pearls but, is. But but where's the line? Because like even for me in crypto, I have to turn the entertain. Because I used to do my show, and it used to be much more like, hey, you guys, I'm looking at this, and I'm doing this. And then I've had to turn myself up to like 12 sometimes. Shout out to the Island Boy stream. Uh, where like I just said, all right, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna do a red. I'm gonna do a fucking red meat show. Let me, let me do some. And then it, it was my most fucking viral show I've ever done because yeah. it's like I'm talking <laughs> shit, right? So where's the line? Because obviously you can't be fucking as fl you can't be as flat as a fucking pancake or a board or some shit boring as fuck. Like where do you? Is it individual or is it like how? infotainment do you want to be you, there are certain things where you can take some great messages out of it like for okay. instance i think um the the whole thing with with jonah hills stating yes, his yes. boundaries man good man if more men would just state your boundaries you'd be so much more attractive to women good right. on him bro he even says no i'm, he, I'm proud even, of that guy he even yeah. says in the message he goes if things like this make you happy i support it mm. but you maybe we're not right for each other right right Congratulate, bro. I wish you had uh, standards like that. Um, you know, so uh, Rolo bootlegged the Barbie movie. And I was like, well, if he's going to bootleg the Barbie movie. I'm going to bootleg the Barbie movie. We watched it. It was horrible. But when I watched it, there's this one part where, where Ken is like, you know, fuck this. You don't appreciate me. So yeah, he yeah. calls sub superfluous and leaves. And Ken goes off and does what a man is so fucking fuck. supposed to do. He goes and gets his own shit without her. Right. And But, oh, you go and got your own shit? That's immature. That's right. deadly, bro. That's a teaching moment, though. Not yeah. that a lot of guys watch that movie, but like that's a teaching moment. But the thing that like what you're going to get a conflation of viral and like helpful, the Logan Paul thing, that's the ultimate teaching tool of the year. Right. We won't get a better teaching tool than that. You didn't pay attention and now your girl has embarrassed yeah. you. Why, why do girls always lie about their fucking body count? Always, right? I mean, if it, if it was like, I mean, you've said this before on streams. I've heard a lot of Red Bull guys say this is like, ask your girl, how, ask your girl or some chick, you know, like how many dudes she slept with. They'll always going to lie about it. And then even when they say the body count doesn't matter, they still lie about yeah, it. Yeah, they'll lie about it and then say it doesn't matter. Then why are you lying about it if exactly. it doesn't matter? Exactly. But they'll say, well, because it matters to guys. Well, yeah, it does matter to guys. And the thing is, my, my response is, oh, because you're a hoe. No, that's not my response. My response is there are studies that show that as your body count increases as a woman, the likelihood of you filing for divorce increases. 
I don't want to be, I don't want a woman to file for divorce against me. So I'm going to choose a woman that has a lower body count. How does that not make sense? I'm sorry. Look for the Institute for Family Studies. They'll show you a, a study that shows this. As her body count increases, the likelihood of her filing for divorce increases. And you might say, well, doesn't it do the same thing for men? Well, here's the reason why it doesn't. Because men aren't filing for divorce. Right. It's 80% women. of divorces are filed by women. So it's not weird. That's not the problem. Men, can, you have a dude who have 200 body count. He's probably still not going to file for divorce. Right. Men filing for divorce is not an epidemic. It's not a problem. But women filing for divorce, they're going to more likely to file for divorce if they have 10 plus bodies. Yeah. That's the truth. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you what the statistics say because the statistics aren't flattering to your gender. It's not my fucking fault. Now, let, let me ask you about friend circles when it comes to women, right? Like, look, and look, this wasn't supposed to be like, we, we didn't devolve into this shit, but this shit is so fucking important because I've seen so many men in the crypto skits get taken advantage by women. Yeah. I've been to so many fucking crypto events and it's always Asian brothers. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. Like, it's, it is. Like, I go to these events, these guys made some money, and they have this fucking, like, crazy fucking wife or some shit or girlfriend, and they're holding, I've seen it, like, here in Las Vegas, at the Cosmopolitan, carrying, like, a fucking 12 fucking bags of Louis Vuitton and this and this, and this little Asian woman in front, like, this in the front, and, like, and you know they're getting, like, they're just getting used for a coin purse and shit, and like, it, it really bugs the fuck out of me with a lot of these guys getting taken advantage of, but you see it a fucking mile away. This is why I want to push the red pill so yeah, much yeah. for the guys not to get, because what you make a bunch of money. And you get taken advantage yeah. of. So, so I love women. I prefer being around women more than I love women. But yeah. so what I'm saying, I'm telling you as a function of like evolution, I'm not saying it because I hate women. Okay. I love women. But if a woman cheats on you and you take her back, mm. there's three problems. Problem number one is she cheated on you. So that's going to embarrass the shit out of you. Yeah. Problem number two is that there's some mechanism in your relationship that isn't working, which caused her to want to cheat on you. You're not good in bed or she doesn't see you as alpha. And number three is you took a woman back who cheated on you so she can never respect you. You see what I'm saying? Yep. There's none of that's hate. I'm not saying that with all love. That's why you can't take a woman back who cheats on you. A man cheats on and you. And it hurts, bro. Yeah, it, it hurts. hurts. It fucking if a man, hurts. If a, man, if, a man, if a man cheats on a woman, she actually can take it. I know it's a double standard, but the, the stats show that dudes, when they cheat, they do so and they're still happy in their relationship. Yeah. So that's the, that's the difference. So when you say that, like when you go back to the thing you were talking about with the, the, the Logan Paul thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem wasn't that Logan Paul's girl has been with... I'm not even going to call her a hoe. I'm going to just say there's a lot of pictures with her with a lot of dudes. I don't know if she fucked all of them. She definitely fucked some of them because there's lots of groping ass and yeah, kissing and that, that type of shit. Um, pretty, sure, pretty sure she slept with Leo. Pretty sure. He's pretty got his sure. hand on her fucking face. So I'm pretty sure that one. But like going back to the, the whole thing, and even you know, they've seen the clip of Diplo straight up saying he fucked her. Yeah. That, was, that one was crazy. <laughs> um, so so that, that's the problem. Like, but the, the problem is you made Logan wait. Yeah. That's bro. <laughs> like you made Logan wait. And the thing is Logan bragged about it. Goes, that's the thing that I really liked about you. That was like really important that you made me wait that amount of time. And I'm like, I know he didn't, she, she didn't make Diplo wait. She didn't make Wes wait. I promise you she calls him Wes too. I promise you she does. She didn't call him Diplo. She calls him Wes. She got go look. Hey, ready? Logan, you watching this? Go look in her phone. Look for Wes. You're going to see Diplo's number right there. Okay. So stop, man. You can put him on suicide. No, but the, the, I mean, the point, the point I'm trying to make is now the problem, like Logan actually, I mean, he did something wrong by not, by not, uh, by not doing his research yeah, yeah. and he did something wrong by wifing her up, but he didn't do anything wrong by, she's a cute girl. He want to have sex with her. That's yeah, totally course. fine. Yeah. The problem is, is that he wifed her up and then he finds this stuff out and then he's put in an impossible situation because the correct answer is to end the engagement. You can't right. get engaged to this woman. I'm sorry. I'm not wrong about this. You they still just haven't can't. gotten married, right? I'm, I'm, no, they still haven't got married. I don't care who calls me a misogynist. You can't do this. You, you can't have a woman embarrass you like this after she made you wait. That's just not possible. It's just, there's no way for him to hold any kind of status if he does this. So, so the problem is like going back to what you said before, if he had set boundaries in the beginning, it makes you so much more attractive to women when you can learn to set boundaries. And when women those cross those boundaries, you, you get them out of the relationship. Right. And when you do so, you do so with no emotion. You do that, you're just fantastically attractive to women, but it hurts because you're losing this woman. Yeah. But that's the thing, if you have options with women, you, you're you not worried about it, you're gonna move on to the next one. I have the greatest girlfriend, my girlfriend's incredible. But at the same time, I also have mechanisms in place to where, God forbid, if we ever broke up, I know I could go meet other women. No. Yeah, and you exactly. wanna know something? That makes my relationship better. It makes it better because she respects me. Right. How do you guys not get this, bro? That's what it does. You have to, like, again, if a, if your girl cheats on you and you take her back, she 
she knows you. Maybe you do have options, but what does it matter if you have options? You took her back after she cheated. Yeah. There's always a problem. Part in her brain, the algorithm, the fucking the hypergamy algorithm is gonna say. In the women. Then I'm so happy that this guy took me back yeah. because you know he pays for everything and like it's actually good to have this warm body to sleep next to. Yada yada yada. But I cheated on him and he took me back. There's she's. It's always gonna creep in her back of her head. Is like, am I with the beta male? My God, I think I'm with the beta male. Like he, I cheated on him and he took me back. It's they can't respect you after they cheat on you. They just can't, guys. It's not it's not their fault. It's not your fault. It just doesn't work. You know the one that always fucks me up too is that she, the this hasn't me. I don't have kids, or, but but like is like you're you're with somebody, you have kids, and then they cheat. After you guys have kids, like I, I, I almost can sort of rationalize in my brain a little bit. Like okay, you beta ties or something happened in the relationship, but bitch. You had three kids, two kids with this motherfucker. Yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck? So, so let, let's let's get this one thing straight, yeah. guys. One more time. Logan Paul is, got duped. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, he can say whatever he wants. He got duped. He got There's duped. no way Logan Paul looked at the videos of her being like, oh, I sucked his dick in a football stadium. Like, There's no way. He, he's not going to marry that girl. Right. He got duped. That's fine. Um, some guys get cheated on. Okay. That happens. One thing I want to make sure we guys understand is that you're not low status if you're a dude who gets cheated on. Right. You take your credit card out and you charge it to the game. That's what happens. It doesn't. <laughs> everybody, if you're high status, you get cheated on. That's not the problem. Right. Women, women. Sometimes when you're super high status, it's only women who would cheat that can get into those parties. Huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a selection pressure for that type of woman. So if you get cheated on your high status, don't trip. That's not the problem. The problem is then you start lying to your boys about why you can take her back. Then you take her back. Then she cheats on you again and embarrasses you. Right. You see what I'm saying? When when um, when Bilzerian, he ends up fucking the the girlfriend of the guy who owns Bodybuilder.com. Yeah. You remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Right? He humiliates him. Yep. If he's going to do that, that's fine. If she's going to cheat on him... That sucks because it's super public and you shouldn't have been talking shit to Bulzarian because now you got now you got what yep, you deserve. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but yeah. you can't take her back. If you take her back, you've compounded the problem. You okay. see what I'm saying? That's the pro that's the issue. The L is when you take them back. That's the problem. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Um, and so that's the issue. And a lot of times what happened was you were having fun with a party girl and decided to make that your girl and you shouldn't have done that. You should have kept having fun. Right. And if you had kept having fun and shown dread, she's going to complain that she's going to leave, but she's not going to leave because you're still better than everyone else. Right. And she's still, most women that won't admit this, but they'd rather share a part of an alpha male than to have all of a beta. So they'll, they're going to stick around. Now, I do you appear to this part where like if a woman's with you, it's because she's admitting that you're better than her. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that you're saying that, like, admitting. I think cognitively, cognitively she's not she's yeah. not admitting that. Yeah. I think subconsciously, there's things that she looks for. And if she were to look at it from a third-person perspective, he is bigger than me, stronger than me, richer than me, smarter than me. Yeah, probably. I mean, that, that, yeah. I, I, I have a hard time disagreeing with that. Um, I think my girlfriend is a way better homemaker than I am. Oh, no. I think, I think yeah. my girlfriend has some skill sets that I don't have. I think, <laughs> I think my girlfriend can walk on stage at clubs I can't get into. Like, right. I th she definitely has a skill set that I don't have. But um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, that's the case. And my girlfriend was telling me this morning, she's like, she's like, I love being with you because I don't think I could ever get this with anyone else because it's like, mm. it's one of these things where it was so nice to hear this. But she's like, um, she's like, you are what I want physically, you're what I want mentally, emotionally, and it's like, I'm really attracted to women, and the women that are attracted to the both of us are so much hotter than if I was with any other guy. Like, I love being with you because of that, and also like, I know that we're with other women, and you're not gonna leave me, which I wouldn't, dude. Yeah. One more time, let me say this again. If your girl brings women home and you cheat on your girl, fuck you. Because you're making my life worse. You're making my life. Dudes like me who are polygynous, yeah. don't cheat on your girl. Break up with your girl and then go see the other girl. But don't cheat on your girl. If your girl brings women home, reward your girl. Do not cheat on her. You are screwing it up for the rest of us when you do. I have no pity for dudes who do that. That is fucking foul. So what do you mean by bringing girls home? Like she's if, if, if she's cool for like a polygynous relationship where she brings home women home for threesomes, yeah, and you still cheat on her, you're you're fucking up the whole world. Oh, fucking them without her there. Yes, bro. Oh, you're okay, fucking okay, the whole fair. world up when you do that. Either have an arrangement where you can see other women on the side and that's yeah. cool, or not have her be your girlfriend or break up with her, but don't have a girl who brings women home be like in a polygynous relationship and then cheat on your girl. Because the problem is What's you don't understand you're fucking it up for everyone when you do that. Right. That's the problem. No, that's a great thing. Yeah, don't you? <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, you're literally getting it at home. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? But um, that, yeah, that is like that is like a crazy ass thing, though. So, would you agree to? I mean, because um, I've heard different people agree to this or not. But like, like you know, men make the rules for women. Women make the rules for men in terms of like attraction and stuff. Yeah. Like so, so what, the way the way Doctor Bus describes it is the arena upon which women compete for men's attention was dis, is described by men. Yes. And the arena on which men compete for women's attention is created by women. Meaning the the things that we do. We wear the nice shirts, we get the nice haircut, we drive yeah. the nice car, and we have the nice watch. We do so because women appreciate those things. And the things that women do, they do so because we, I, I love dudes who are like, I would never date a girl like that. She looks too fake. And I, and I go to the Rhino, and I just see all these women with huge fake tits, and like they're making more money than anyone, but you keep telling me. And then I look at, like, I, like you, there's a great oh. book on this, like it goes over porn research. Yeah. Uh, oh, data, a, data, data, no, data, 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 everyone lies. I think it's called everybody lies. Okay. And it goes over like porn research and it's like clear that these guys who are saying they would never date these women are like literally paying to watch these women on OnlyFans. Mm. And I'm just like, like, dude, just stop lying. You would fuck anything that would give you a chance. And you're sitting there like, <laughs> no, I would never fuck that girl. No, I am. I have high status. I'm a high status male. You're, you're, a, fifth, a, <laughs> you're a fucking, you're a fucking oh. 15 year old kid who's angry. Oh. Who's living in your mom's basement saying, I would fuck this her, this girl is yeah. haram and she's a 304. Sure. Bro, you've never like, oh my God, it's just so crazy. And by the way, she may be a 304. I'm not saying that yeah. she's not. My point is like, stop acting like you get to judge, bro. People well, with glass houses should not be throwing rocks. Why do these religious dudes, because I've noticed dude, these religious dudes lie so, it doesn't matter if you're fucking Christian or fucking, you know, whatever the fuck you are, right? Like they all, they're like, they're some of the biggest hypocrites on the planet. In terms of like they're, of they, they hide behind their fucking religion, and but they're doing all the fuck shit. Behind Yo, the my favorite, my favorite two ones are the vice. He's the uh, lieutenant general, the lieutenant governor for the state of Tennessee, was trying to pass laws against uh, gay Oklahoma. marriage. Yeah, yeah, yep. And turns out he was like liking all these gay photos. He was. Was he, was he a gay orgy? No, he was he was he was messaging all these gay people on Twitter, and then he turns out like he something. He was in a bathroom and he yeah. was soliciting someone for gay sex. And the other one is. I don't mean to say anything mean, but because uh, I want him on my show is Jesse Lee Peterson, who sits there and says that oh, gay right. people, gay people are made; they're not born. And sure enough, two of his employees come out and say that he sexually, like, he solicited them for sex. Yes, male employees. And then he also he liked a video on his Twitter of one guy eating another guy's ass. Have you seen this? <laughs> No. And then it was up there for a while because you know on Twitter it shows the things that you like in the yeah, like yeah, tab. Yeah, yeah. So it showed it, and then everyone was screenshotting it, and then like, and then it went his he made his Twitter private afterwards. And it's funny, Alex playing with fire literally questioned about it, and he fucking rage quit. He he wow. he jumped off the off the stream. But that's the thing, like like um, if you like I. We need to like not be so judgmental. Gay people are okay for being gay. If gay yeah. dudes want to fuck gay dudes, let's be, that's okay. What the problem we need to have is when a, a straight dude fronts like he's not gay, but he is gay and then hates gay people. Right. What we need to what we need to call out is a girl who's a hoe calling other women a hoe when she's a hoe. You yes. see what I'm saying? What we need to call out is the the crypto grifter who's calling other people crypto grifters when they're a crypto grifter. What we need to call out. Hypocrites. You're the hypocrites. What we need to call out is the dude saying other people, he's natty when other people are taking steroids when he's taking steroids. Right. That's who we need to call out. What so we need we when, need to call out, like what I'm saying is, if, if this, uh, Destiny is a great example. Destiny is openly bisexual right. and lets his girl fuck other dudes. We can say that's weird, but he's open about it. Let, yeah. we, you want to criticize him, criticize him on his political beliefs. You right. shouldn't criticize him because he lets his girl, because yeah. his girl brings women home and they fuck, he fucks two or three women at the same time. That's the arrangement that he has agreed to. Remember, if a guy's openly gay, that's cool to be openly gay. The problem is when you're in the closet about it and then you start bashing on gay people. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's the issue. Again, one more time. The dude who's in the red pill space saying XYZ's wife is ugly when his wife is ugly. The guy sitting there talking about don't date a single mom when he's dating a single mom. That's the shit we should be like. Well, that's oh, we, the know, problem. we know quite yeah, a few of those it, But like, that's the problem. Like, <laughs> you can say a lot of shit about me. You're not going to say I'm a hypocrite. You're not right. going to say I'm a hypocrite. I date women with big fake titties and I'm happy about it. Like I don't have a, like you're never going to call me a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, that's the issue. So that's the, that's the problem. We should have a problem with the hypocrites. Yeah. That's the issue. That's my only issue. Now, where, where do you stand on like some of this stuff? It, oh, fuck. Because I like, like I have no problem with gay people, lesbian people. I like literally like I'm cool with it all. It's just like, it, there is just a weird thing in like, in my gut that just, I like, eh, we should, we should, we should, we should probably shouldn't be talking this shit to kids. Like, this shit's of course. Of, you I know totally what I mean? agree. But I don't, uh, by the way, most LG, LBGT people. So here's the thing. I've said this before. And I, I'm going to keep saying it because I, I, I said it in a lot of people. I was surprised how many people agreed with me. Okay. Gay people, openly gay men are going to leave LBGT. Ooh. Because, because openly gay men are law lawyers, doctors, they're in the military, they live Sassy. normal lives. 
openly gay men are, are actually like living kind of like the normal American dream now. And they're getting right. pulled into controversy they don't want anything to do with. I mean, like openly gay dudes are just like, actually a lot of them are politically conservative. And yeah. they're like, yep. don't drive, like AOC doesn't represent me. You see what I'm yeah. saying? I'm saying this as a straight man. Openly gay men, I think, are going to leave the LBGT community. And I think LBGT causes hurt openly gay men because openly gay men are like, yo, man, we fought our battle like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. We're like, we're, we're kind of cool now. Like, we can make yeah. money. Like, Buttigieg, like, the idea that he even ran for president, like, yeah. that kind of tells you something about the Overton window, like, right? I, I've got gay cousins of mine that tell me that they're tired of these fucking fag gays. Yeah. When they're straight gays, which means, like, he's like, he's like, <laughs> You got those who I'm talking about too. Yeah. yeah, we got some gay cousins, both lesbian and straight, and uh, yeah. you know, gay and stuff. And they're like, "I'm getting tired of this fucking faggotry." Yeah, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> no, here's the other thing: a tr a bisexual woman yes. who who presents as a feminine woman and a trans man have nothing to do with each other. But we're putting them in this one category. Right. There's another thing with the, the BLM stuff. I had Hotep Jesus on last week. Yep. And he was talking about this whole idea where if you were pro-BLM, you also had to be pro-LBGT. And he was like, bro, I have nothing. Like, I'm pro-BLM. Like, before, he's like, I'm, I'm pro-black rights. Like, I don't understand. Why do I have to be pro-LBGT? And it's like, because if you're against one, then you're against all of us. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. You know right. what I'm saying? I don't understand. Now, going back to what I'm saying, each individually, lesbians, cool. Gay people, cool. Yeah. Bisexual, cool. Trans, cool. Be over 18. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Be over 18. I'm not a bigot because I think people should be over 18 years old. Let me tell you something else. Nobody had to tell me to be straight. Right. Nobody had to explain. Nobody had to give me a course when I was growing up to be straight. But I will tell you this. When I went through puberty, when I was, before I went through puberty, I was sure I was, I was pretty sure I was straight. When I yeah. went, when I got through puberty, I was damn sure I was straight. straight. Yes, sir. I love, boy, I'm trying to tell you. That my, I had three hobbies and it was looking at girls. I love, boy, when I was 15, 16 years old, I was so girl crazy. It was crazy, right? Because I have all that flood of testosterone. If my maleness in part comes from my attraction towards women, how the fuck am I supposed to make a decision about my gender before I go through puberty? Right. Because I haven't fully experienced my maleness. So that's the thing, making me have a decision before that point, that doesn't make any sense. So if you want to indoctrinate me to do that, like, I, like that's the part that's so crazy to me. It's like, I don't even have enough information to make this decision. Right. So why are you trying to get me to make this decision? It's like, oh, well, you know, this one I heard is like, well, the, the surgeries take better if you do it before puberty. That's oh not a good reason. God, That's dude, not a good dude. reason. That's not a good reason. So, like, the thing is, uh, as, a, as a U.S. military member, I will fight for the right of someone wanting to transition. Absolutely. I'll also fight for your right to kneel if you want to kneel. I wouldn't kneel, but I would fight for your right to kneel if you wanted right. to. But if you want to do this to kids, don't tell me that these kids can't smoke cigarettes, can't drink alcohol, can't vote, and can't join the military but they have the wherewithal to change their gender when they haven't gone through puberty. Right. There is no logical argument other than indoctrination in yep. that case. There is no logical argument. And I say this, remember, I opened up by saying, I have no problem. These individual groups are great. That's fine. We have diversity. 0.2% of the American population is trans. Why? Well, I, think I, don't that's, even, I, I think that's even high. That, that's great. Like, I don't even... I don't like we're sitting there tripping over this stuff. Like it's not, they're not that many trans people to be in with, but then the, then this propaganda comes out and you're like, Oh man, you're coming after the kids, man. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. That's where the problems happen. And so you, that's where I see it's indoctrination. How come you didn't have to indoctrinate me to be straight? Like leave the fucking kids alone. Let them figure this out on their own. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. was a good man. Junior high pimples in the face, right. getting picked on junior high is the most junior high is more hostile than federal prison. Junior high is really hostile. <laughs> you want me to go through all that shit? It's like all of a sudden, oh man, I'm really stressed out about my 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 classmates. Okay, well let's change your gender. What the fuck? That's the solution. You know what the gender? You know what the solution was for me when I was 15 and they were picking on me? What? Going to the gym. Yes, sir. Bench press. That was the solution. Yes, sir. Then they stopped picking on me. How about that? What about a creator? What a crazy yeah. idea like that? Join the football team. Go the, join the football team. Join the chess team. Join the debate team. Whatever. Find some friends. That, it's supposed to be awkward. It's supposed to be weird. I really like. If I could go back, I really would have joined more sports teams, or I would have done more stuff like that. Because that puts you in these crazy. That's what we did with Kyle and stuff too. Like, well, I ain't gonna snitch on you. <laughs> All the stuff you did, but, um, but th that is a big thing. You know, like, like you don't have a social group. Go join a fucking team or something like that. You're there. You got it now. now. Or at the very least, you're not gonna get picked on anymore. Like I've seen so many. I've, they, they would even like let guy, even a sh super short guy, just at least be on the bench or some shit, training with the team. And at the very least, he was like, oh, he's one of the homies, bro. He like he train, we train with him for sure. Yeah, like for sure. It, camaraderie. My, again, networking is an evolutionary adaptation. That's why I teach in my course, and that's where it comes from. Moa, you guys. Yes. Get in and stuff. So, um. 
can you give a little um, right before we close up and stuff like can you a little description of like what do you do in terms of the MOA and stuff and like when did you actually start it actually? Um, so I started teaching this in 08. Oh, wait, I did wow. it for free until 2020. Why did you do it for free? I mean, wait, wait, why did you even start it in a way? So I was making money as in finance and people like, I, it was one of these things where it was like, I was reverse engineering why guys were really good with women. Yeah. And I just would do it. And then people would ask me to come speak at stuff and they would literally fly me out okay. to go speak on stage at different things. But I wasn't doing it professionally. And I was like, oh man, it's a free trip to Miami. Fuck it. I'll go speak on stage. I like speaking on stage. Yeah. So I did it for a while. And then in 2020, I was like, okay, maybe I should start doing this professionally. So... This is uh, October 2020. My course comes out. Yep. And then afterwards, um, you know, we quadrupled the size of the company very quickly. We read a couple of books. I will tell you right now, $100 million offer, probably $100 million offer and, and uh, Traffic Secrets, two of the best books for, I'm a, I'm for, 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 growing, for growing that book, for yep. growing that, that, uh, that whole thing. And so, you know, we grow the course. And um, what is it? It's uh, local celebrity status. Yeah. Like, just think of like mid tier celebrity status, which is very accomplishable. Right. It's like, I'll give you a couple examples. Like, uh, if you guys ever go to Access, there's a dude named David Haddon who, who's on stage. Yeah. Haddon can wave his hand and you just come on stage. Like, nothing. He's got that power. Haddon, if he's like, is a beautiful woman, it's like, hey, you want to come on stage at, at Access? He just waves his hand and he, you got that power. Yeah. Haddon would, is what I would consider to be like a lower middle class celebrity. In Las Vegas, he's a celebrity celebrity, but in, in general, like a lower middle class celebrity. He can do that because he had, and that's, a com that's an accomplishable level of celebrity, right? So what we teach is networking, we teach leadership, and we teach how to show up to a party with 70 or 80 girls. Right. That's like the main things that we teach. We teach networking is an evolution and adaptation, and we teach leadership because that is the, one of the most fundamental things that men in self-help and in dating are missing, is the concept of leadership, how to be a good leader, how to take ownership, extreme ownership, of these people around you. I am there to protect my friends, but I'm not there to save them. The reason why so many people want to take my course, again, is because in the end, you become the connector. You become the guy that everybody gets their job through, everyone meets their girl through, everyone meets their employees through, everyone makes money through, everyone me meets their mentors through, everyone gets their book recommendations through, everyone gets their TV recommendations through, everyone gets their, <laughs> all the shit. Oh, you, the, everyone comes to me because I'm a suggester and I'm a right. connector. And so that's what we teach you in this in this uh, show, or that's what we teach you in MOA. And uh, we start off with uh, the free school server. Yep. It teaches you the first four steps of MOA. For number one, fix your social media. Number two, build your list. Number yep. three, figure out a way to get open threads with thousands of people. And number four, take six girls to these events. Boom. Yeah, that's the first four steps. We yep. teach you that very easily in the course. And we give you an Instagram audit in the course. And we give you the book list. And we give you the schedule. And we give you the testimonies. There you go, guys. Shit, man. Well, hey. Michael, thank you so much for coming, man. Of course. Hey, I, pre I really appreciate it. good. Bro. No, I appreciate that, man. It's fun. Hey, well, you guys, we'll be back Thursday with an AMA at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And actually, even tomorrow, we might even do a little something for you guys. I mean, definitely, if anyone who's in the Citadel or in the crypto mindset chats and stuff, we got something special planned for the, later this week and stuff. Uh, we'll let you know. Check the pin messages. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, thank you, Michael, man. All right, brother. Peace. See you soon. Take care.